Volkswagen when I did it um, back in 1994, 1995. That's when the Notorious Big came out with um, Ready to Die. You know, listening to One More Chance in the Car with a couple of people, and Silver B was an MC. Garfield, there was a talent show, and I did a song called Genuine Number One Fan, and Silver B was the MC. He always was there. You know, he remembered me from mm -hmm. the talent shows. That's number two. Number three, I was in an organization called Cake Boy, Cake Girl, IMC, where we pretty much gave parties and invested in the community, and one of our investments was uh, happy meals and toys for the kids at the McDonald's on. It was one on 30th and one on 116th in um, Buckeye and Silver B showed up all the time. He showed up for those events and other events and things of that nature. And lastly, I had a meeting with Errol Porter and the other vice president. And Errol, shout out to EP, the show host, told me to come down to a show on Wednesday. Guess what the show was? the Edgementainment Royalty Roundtable hosted by Silver B. That was in 2015. And I started my radio career here, February 1st, 2016. Silver B convinced me to start my radio career here. He convinced me to start my radio career here. And he's always been a mentor, I've always been a support order of everything that I did. He even said I should be on television one time. I'm like, me? No, am I light skin behind? No, I should be. But he had convinced me to do other things, work in the community, being an advocate, an activist. And so we as radio hosts here, and I'm talking about my colleagues here at voiceradio.com, Al Porter Jr., Laura Cowan, um, Daughters of the Nile, um, David Delgado, um, everybody else says here at WasterRadio.com, we have some big shoes to fill. We don't have to, we're, no one's going to be another William Silver B. Richards. No one's going to say in the mix, 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 mix like he does. No one will do that. But the thing about it is, is like with Kathy, from the Kathy Ray Comans to the Al Porter Juniors to every to the Art McCoys to everybody else, we have to make sure that not only we keep on doing what we do here in black media, but we keep on pushing the narrative for betterment of our communities here. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Silver B would've wanted. That's exactly what he would've wanted. Not only for the politicians, but for the entertainers like Brandon and Bell. Like, like those, 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 people those people that he that put, he put on, on to make sure that they had a voice. Because some of these people out here in our community are, feel like that they don't have a voice at all. Feel like they, they have a voice of like we we are part of the voice of the voices, and Silver B was the main reason that we did that. And the thing about it is, he always supported back to school giveaways. I see my man Jerome Brown walking in seven 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 right behind me. The thing about it is, is that he, had, he made a strong voice for. Black on black, black man's arms. He was everything that was positive in the community. That's what Silver B. I'm not saying was. I'm saying is. Because of the simple fact of the matter is, even though the body may be gone, the spirit is still here. Amen. Amen. The spirit never dies, and his will never die. Okay, now, he's okay. up there with the people he took pictures with, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, things of that nature. So he's fine. He has a new body. And if anybody believes in the higher power, believes that you have a new body in Christ, and he believed in God, his strong mm -hmm. belief in God, he's up mm -hmm. there with um, Robert Godwin who was brutally murdered on Easter Sunday. He was, uh, he's up there with Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, the people that, the people that not only were famous to us, you know, he helped with along the way. And no matter what we do from here on, after the celebrations of life, after the foods ate and after repast, after everything else, we have to carry on his legacy. Just because he's not here that we can see him, physical, touch him, talk to him, or he talked to us. Silver B's in here. He's in our hearts. 
He's in our prayers. He's in our minds. Because of the simple fact of the matter is that he was it's a devastating loss. You know, the politicians he helped, Mayor Justin Bibb, who shouted him out at the uh, 11 Congressional Parade. Um, Chantel Brown, um, Blaine Griffin, who's the Cle city of Cleveland um, president of, the, of city council. Uh, Richard Starr, the, um, the new councilman, Deborah Gray. Those people he also helped, those people that he, he, he talked with, he saw. Those entertainers from the local hip hop artists to the national hip hop artists that he helped. I mean, he's the only man I knew that it took a picture side by side with one of my favorite artists, Jay-Z. So can't tell me nothing of what Silver B had or had not done. He was a mentor of mine. He was the re reason, one of the reasons that I got into it. He was a mentor to so many people. He was a mentor to uh, Kevin MC Chill Hurt. He was a mentor to everybody. He stood side by side with Harry Boomer. I remember that parade that he was in, the Cavaliers Championship parade. There's so many memories of Silver B that we have. And the thing about it is one of the biggest, I knew that I was devastated. I woke up Monday morning to go take pictures at the 11th Congressional District Parade. It was raining. It, de it delayed a little bit. We have rain in Cleveland, it's no secret. But the thing about it is, is like sometimes when you know somebody's supposed to be there, that it's not rain, I felt like you know, the angels were crying because Silver B should have been there. That was my thing. And I started to think as I put on my clothes and get dressed to walk down there, Silver B should be here, but he's looking down on us smiling. And I know that this is probably gonna sound crazy and outrageous. And I'm going to miss this from him. And I know some of y'all are crying here and I'm crying with y'all. I was crying last week. I was crying yesterday. Hell, I'll probably cry when I leave here. But could I get a, in a, 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 a can I get in a mix mix one time? From everybody, from every, please do this for me. Everybody who was a mic, yes, mix, 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 if nobody tells you that they love you today, I love each and every one of you from the people who are in here. It's all about love. But for the people at on the phone to the people watching at home on Zoom, thank you, God, for William Silver B. Riches. Peace, love, and hair grease. I'm going to put a black fist stuff for my man Silver B. Up All right. Real quick, before uh, we're going to have Juanita, uh, Councilwoman Juanita Gotti, right after Ebony Daniels. Ebony, go ahead. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Ebony, and I am um, a former engineer at Voice It Radio. I met Silver B at Voice It Radio. I was doing the, I was engineering the show that was before his. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually engineered for him once or twice when uh, his regular engineer was unavailable. And I remember when I met Silver B, I was familiar with him because um, as everyone said, Silver B was at every event in the city I don't know how he pulled that off, but um, <laughs> I, I assume however he pulled it off must have been how I pulled it off because as a teenager and a young adult, I saw Silver B at all of the events, but I never really knew his name, you know? So when you're a kid, like he's the, he was the, the man with the long dreads and the voice, he had a very distinct voice. And um, I assume I probably eventually learned his name was Silver B, but kind of just forgot. And then when I met him um, officially, I remember thinking, well, wow, it's you. Like, you're him, you know? And um, I never really said much to him about knowing him from my childhood. I kind of just uh, respected him for who he was and we talk to him a lot about Cleveland politics. That's probably what I talk to Silver B the most about. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that he was big on the music. 
in the city. And um, I know he was big on like making connections, bringing people together, you know, things like that. But I would say that our special conversations during the transition from um, show to show would be about politics. And it would be national, it'd be local, it'd be state. And um, he said, you you watched it? You you watched the, 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 uh, the president last night? And I said, yeah, so it would be, I watched it. Or, you know, I say, um, so it would be, you know, we got this big mayor, come, we got this big mayor transition coming up, you know, how you, how, how you think it's looking, you know, or we would talk about the council and um, I do a, a show as well that was on the voice of radio platform and it's on a different platform now. And he'd say, I, I heard you last night, queen, you did good. And so I always knew that Silver B was somebody who uh, demanded respect, deserved respect, and then provided respect to other people. And, um, even if you didn't always like understand him, you respected him. You knew where he was going with it. You knew his intentions, and you appreciate his intentions. You later when I see you. So, on our show, um, we do the Big Half Radio Show, and so we did our show um, last week. And at the end, we did honor Silver B. We spoke well of him. We played a clip of his last show, where on the show he did speak about staying close to your family and i'm pretty sure when he said that he meant blood and um what they might call extended or next to kin or yeah, fictive yeah. you know fictive kin and um we played um a portion of that show where he spoke about family ties rekindling them um making them right again and keeping them close because that's you know what silver b did so he will be missed. Um, he is a legend in our city. I know he's a legend in the world, but he is a legend in our city. And um, he deserves the utmost respect. Councilwoman Gotti. Yes, I wanna thank you, Earl Porter, from having this event uh, celebration of Silver Bee. And I really appreciate this. Um, I was on Voices of Voice of Radio, and uh, Silver B pushed me there. He pushed me to be the councilwoman of East Cleveland. <laughs> he took me all around the park. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> I, he said, if I'm going to back you up, you're going to get in there. And I said, oh, mm -hmm. Silver B had me on the radio, told, told me now Listen, this is how you do. You walk with me. You walk like this. You know, and he, he was struggling with it too. So he met all, I, I didn't meet so many people that day. And when I got home, I was so tired. Somebody would say, what's wrong with you? I couldn't even get up the next day. I said, Silver B took me everywhere around the park. <laughs> the park at East Cleveland, Fort Hill. I didn't know it was so many parts. <laughs> he knew every spot. So mm -hmm. he invited a lot of people. He took pictures with me. Shaw Band was there, you know, and I ended up getting that seat as councilwoman, just like he said. Then he said, what else you like to do? And I said, Silver B, I'm a playwright. He said, you are? He said, I want to see, I, I, I want to read one of your plays. I said, when well, you want to read it? And so he was saying, what's the name of it? And I told him a couple of the names of my play in which I told him I want a production company. He said, oh, you're going to get that too. And believe it or not, I got my production company. It's called Royalty Swag, Super Swag, that? you know. So uh, we get ready to do the plays. And, and he said, I know so many people. I've been so many places. And he said that, you know, he encouraged me. The last time when me and Jackie had seen him at Chantel Brown, um, yeah, the victory celebration. And we, he loved to take pictures. I'm telling you, you can't leave out without taking a picture. And I'm just saying, I'm I'm just going to miss him so much. You know, he inspired me so much. He is a legend for everybody that he touched. He never met a stranger. To me, Absolutely. he met friends, you know, and he latched on to you. Family. He you where you need to go. And I'm going to miss him dearly. And I want to thank you for this opportunity of me speaking about him because he truly is not he's truly is not 
he's going to be missed, but he's not dead to me. He his spirit lives forever. Thank you. All right. We got uh real quick, Alanda. Queen Alanda. Hey. hey, how you doing? Go ahead. All right. Well, hey, I want to shout out everybody. I want to shout out Dollar Bill, Jerome hey. Brown, hey. who I believe we both got our start uh, on the royalty round table with Silver B um, and Black Media. Um, it's really, really hard because Silver B, we started off as, you know, at, at the hip hop workshops and evolved to voice and radio. And eventually it just blossomed into a father daughter relationship. And he adopted me as his goddaughter. And I in turn adopted him as my godfather. And in doing so, we grew so close that it was one point in time in my life was now I'm in Florida right now. And it's really, really hard for me um, because I can't be there the way I wanted to be. And I was not there over these past seven months. But at one point in time, I would have to say 2021 was our year because he would take me to the movies. We would go out to eat. And then the main part that was fun to me was you know we got to talk and ride in the car and he liked and I realized how cool he really was I got to see a, another side to him and that was the side who wanted to blast the music and bump his head back and forth and talk and you know just listen to me to see what I wanted and not and what I was going through and to shed light and give me advice you know and at one point in time, we were. If you saw me, you saw him. Like, cause I wasn't going outside unless he was right by my side. And um, he just had a way to make you feel special. Like there was nobody else that was in the room. He had a way to make me feel that way. And then he also had a bolster and way to make make you feel special as well, to let you know, no, you're a, a different from them. Because as being one of the original Royalty Roundtable members, if I ever walked in, up into Voice of Radio and it was, if all the seats were full, somebody was getting up out that seat. And he said, no, Queen Alana is here. You're one of the originals. You always have a seat here. And he just always had a way, like you said, he never met a stranger. He knew everybody. He was a legend. He knew he, who he was, and he wanted to always instill in us who we were. So when you sat down at the table, he, if you said, what's your name, and you didn't say king or queen in front of it, oh, he absolutely. made you start all the way back over. That's a fact. You know, and he would say, tell them who you are, you know. Yeah. And um, I didn't know that he was sick like that, you know. Um I just saw that he had lost weight and he played it off to me as though he just went vegan. And I, I took it, you know, but um, people, he went out on his own terms, you know, and um, he lived his life the way that he wanted to live his life. And I'm going to miss him with my whole soul. And, um, I'm going to, he would want us to keep rocking till the wheels fall off. He would want us to do what we were supposed to do to be great leaders. He would want us to party. Um, and this is, and he would want us to miss him because <laughs> he knew he was special and he wanted everyone around them, him to know that they were special too. So I think my highlight was we were at a party one day. And then all of a sudden, I hear a, a whistle blowing, right? <laughs> I said, where's this whistle coming from? And Godfather's over there whirling his hand around with the whistle in his mouth. <laughs> he was the party. And he would say the microphone was his, his drug. And um, I'm just going to miss him. And I, I love you all for, for being a part of his life and in turn being a part of my life and you know, uh, I would have to say a shout out to my, my fellow guy sisters, Tammy and, and Kim Hammond, um, who I was not able to share because it was hard for, enough for me to get on here. So I'm just really grateful that I was able to push through 
and, and being being on this uh, meeting, and that uh, I pray that I get to see you all in the flesh when the final arrangements are are put together. Um, Laura Cowan, uh, his his first cousin, I love you, Queen. Um, again, the extended family, Lazy Bone. I, I'm so sorry. Um, my condolences for your mom, and you know his last song, Crossroads, and Family Reunion was the first one. So. Let's stay together, stick together, and be good, and put God first. God, family, yes, and that that's it. I love right. you guys. Great I call. will always love Silver B, Silver B, my Godfather, and he will always be in the mix, 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 mix. All right, got it right. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> So, you know, only my godfather can get me to get on the mic because I avoid it all the time. He actually pre warned me of this and I didn't realize what it was. There you go. Love you, sis. I love you, Alana. I love you, Kim. So, I knew so would be probably most of my life because I grew up in Glenville, but he adopted me as his goddaughter. Ooh, maybe I was an adult but probably about 20 years ago, maybe. And, you know, we go through life and we, oh, call each other auntie or cousin or brother or sister, but he really taught me what the meaning of that was. Yes, he was the entertainment godfather to everybody. But when he adopted me as his godfather, he showed me, taught me through words and deeds that it's not just about a scene. And so if I was sick and didn't tell him, he would get upset because he wanted to know, did you want some juice? Did you need mm -hmm. some? Did you? Uh, it, it, just little things that I didn't realize. If I needed advice about dating or whatever, he was serious about those things. So, you know, the the what he did was unmatched. Yep in politics, in entertainment, but who he was as the man to each person individually is amazing. I don't even know how anybody could do that. So I just wanted to um, say something because I could hear him in my ear saying, say something, <laughs> say something. Say something. <laughs> and I, I just, the funny story, how I really knew I was his goddaughter was one time he lost his phone, you know, lost his phone all the time and this lady calls me from the post office and says um, your godfather lost his phone and I'm like how does this lady know that this is my <laughs> because I am in his phone as god daughter T queen god so that was kind of like the point where the heart melts like okay this is this is real this is really Aww. real so I just want to say, I love you. I love each to every one of you. I don't think y'all know how hard this is for me, but um, I just thank God that um, he put Silver B in my life. I thank him for that. But I would be remiss with all the accolades that we are saying, just like my God sister, I will echo God First. I know. Absolutely. That's right. Amen. All right. We got a uh, real quick uh, Preston Pickett. Preston's on the live. Let's see if we can get Preston to say a few words. Here. Hey, Preston, how's it going? Hold on. Hey, Preston, how's it going? How's it going, everybody? Peace, Scott. God bless you all. Again, as people have said, God first, uh, the thought of Silver B resonates with me, with my memories of Vales, because the 11th Congressional District Caucus would have its meetings there. Uh, and that was when you learn how, how Silver B knew everybody. Uh, from Congressman Lewis Stokes, uh, the opportunity to meet politicians, the fact that we had the chance to honor Silver B 
on several occasions on an annual basis at Cleveland State University with the Silver Bee Edutainment Award. Uh, at this time, I am told that that uh, ceremony is being discontinued. So I'm looking forward to hopefully having some other way uh, to appreciate him as he would also uh, support the community with health conversations through the Howard A. Mims African American Cultural Center. I am on this line as an individual artist not representing Cleveland State University at this time. And I can also remember <clears throat> when you went to that Labor Day parade at not Luke Easter, that Labor Day parade at Woodhill Park, mm -hmm. that he would be up there on the stage and he would call people out and he would call you to the stage to present your talent. So this, this idea of uh, having somebody in the community that recognized uh, individuals for their talents and giving young people a chance. I was just thinking about it today as well in regard to the, the wealth of Silver Bee. The wealth of Silver Bee is golden. So we have a Silver Bee that's golden the wealth in thinking that the amount of money that it costs to incarcerate one person. And if we think that we give the studies to how the arts can pull people away from uh, negative things, that he carried all of the wealth in thinking that he redirected so many lives. So with that, I, I won't be, be longer than that in saying thank you for this opportunity to honor Silver B. Uh, peace and respect to everybody on the line who preceded me as well, and those who will continue to reflect on his legacy. And I look forward to having people stay in touch and keep their families in touch and passing on that legacy of Silver B in the mix, 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 mix. Peace, y'all. Yo, Dave Tyler on the line on what's ATL. Hey, Dave, how's it going? I'm good. What it do, people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're talking about that. Hey, can you come up with you on the speaker phone? Oh, let me. I'm with my headphones. Let me turn it off. I'm sorry. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Go ahead. I say it's a smartphone. We talked about that, Dave. No cursing. So, uh, <laughs> What's going on, Dave? This, is, this has been a Just rough a push day, man, as far as, like, my heroes. These are my heroes, man. Uh, first, I lost my uncle slash dad, Lynn Tolliver, and that was the last time I saw Silver B was at his service. And uh, he, he was just, man, a, a big component, a big supporter of my life, my career. I've been hanging around Silver B since I was about 13 years old, man, and... Uh, He's, he's been nothing but family, a great influence. Um, man, I love that dude, man. I, I'm, I'm really heartbroken. I ain't going to even lie. And uh, I haven't really had a chance to, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm getting emotional. I haven't really, really had a chance to, uh, to process it because I have seen him over the last few years. I've lost so many people that have been close to me. Like they've been picked from my pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like my uncle, uh, uh, about three weeks ago, I just lost my father-in-law. You know, a lot of times you're not cool with your father-in-laws, and uh, you know, we it, it was rough. You know, yeah, anybody gonna marry my daughter? You gonna have to prove yourself. And after a while, we got real cool, and he passed. And then here goes Silver B. Yes, in the mix, <laughs> in the heavenly mix now. And you know, uh, man, he, he was that dude to me, man. I don't care what nobody said, but think about Silver B. We've had our. Uh, <laughs> We've had our little things, and he's like, "Hey, respect." Talk about that. Yes, <laughs> I just, I, I'm, I'm gonna miss that man. You know that right there, Silver B. Anybody that has ever touched the stage or made it out of the city, as far as entertainment, from Bone to Avon to the Vert to Men at Large to the Rude Boys, owes a, a moment of gratitude to Silver B because he was the ambassador of entertainment the mayor, the governor, the president of entertainment for the city. If you, he, he can even, the governor of all the festivals, all the, the talent events, man, that's how me and Jason started. If it wasn't for him, East Cleveland Festival, Collinwood, 
uh, War One over there where I grew up, uh, Glenville especially, and that was the launch of the, the Men at Large at on the stage and crazy the day we were on the big stage. That's when Bone was on the other stage. And then just look at it because of William Mapes is what I call him. But um, yeah, man, I'll be in town on this weekend for the for the, uh, for the funeral. Hopefully they'll allow me to sing because every time I see it, hey, you, you, you want to come on and sing a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sing a little bit of this song for me. Come on, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, you know, I'm going to miss that, man. But he would call me and say, yeah, go, come on the show Wednesday. I was like, Silver, I just was on there last week. Don't matter. Just, 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 just. Listen, I know what I'm doing now. Because I told him I wanted wow. to do politics. And he took me down to the city council meeting. And that's when I found out I really didn't want to do politics because it was too much. <laughs> I'm too fat and lazy. Joe Jones can have it, man. And, um, and the rest of the guys, they do a great job of what they're doing. But Silver B, man, sheesh, who, who going who gonna to sit at the top now? Who's going to be responsible for the city to bring back the integrity and, and of the talent and inspire these, these young cats to, to go as hard as he did? You know what I'm saying? He made sure that you were rehearsed. He made sure that you were serious. He made sure you were dedicated. He made sure that you respected everybody that was around. You respected the situation. Dave, don't do that. Don't do that. that that's enough, right? You know that. You don't care. <laughs> I, I'm saying, and, and anytime I would do something wrong, he say, "Dave, I'm talking about that." His, his, his famous, his his famous line with me was, "Dave, we talked about that. He, we talked about that." Didn't we? And, you know, but uh, yeah, man, my heart is broke, man. Um, we just need some new guys to step up. I, I know it, he was a probably the last of a dying breed, as far as like, yeah. Man, Silver B just wanted to put everybody on, man. That's all. I was watching a video somebody sent me. We were sending some ladies from some committee in the TV station in there, and they wouldn't talk. He's like, yeah, yeah, come here. Here we have such and such from Cleveland, this, that, little association. You need to talk. Here she is. Here she is. So, um, you know, man, he is uh, – I'm heartbroken, man. It's been a rough year for me, man. Uh, I know Silver B didn't drink and all that other stuff, but I'm going to have a couple shots for him Saturday. And uh, – <laughs> I love I love that man, dude. He was he was he was he was my other uncle, and he didn't like me to say that because he felt like Lynn was gonna get offended. But I was like, man, f that. You my uncle, cause you've been there for me the same way, man. He was one of my heroes, and I'm a I'm gonna end it like that. But yes, Silver B in the heavenly mix, mix on ninety three. You know, on, on uh, what are we at right now? Where are we at? Uh, uh, we're on Voice of Radio with Silver B. B. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In the mix, 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 mix. Yeah, man. I'm going to miss that, man. Man. Y'all got me in my feelings over here. It's all good. Yeah, just All right, I'm out. That's it. Uh, I'll save it for Saturday, man. I ain't doing it. I'm already getting my feelings. I got you. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Hello, everyone out there. Appreciate you being here. Brother, take my call. Perfect, everybody. Hope you, um, glad you're here and um, glad to be a part of this celebration. I wanted to uh, give a shout out from Billy Preston's family. Uh, Derek Preston says that he gives his love and his prayers uh, from LA and um, or, uh, had some amazing times um, when he arrived here for uh, the Bone Bugs and Harmony concert. Um, and then the many times that we can talk about uh, the Black Coalition, um, or I should say the Cleveland Coalition about music when he that was in town. Uh, he asked me to be a member of that and uh, pour out a memory of that talent that came through. And then the Black Coalition, we went down to the D.C. area, a long trip, and it was a wonderful time. My parents got to meet Silver B out in West Virginia, and uh, just a great time. So look forward to the celebration, looking forward to celebrate uh, his life forever. That's it. In the mix. In the mix. Man, in the mix. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Denise. I'd like to thank um, Earl Radio for allowing me to speak. Um, Silver B is my cousin, will always be my cousin. And I'm sending love um, for my daughter, Asia, my son, Domingo, my mother, Mary, and Diane. We were all his family. Um, him and Asia had had a really close relationship a um, couple, like less than two weeks before um, B left us. 
he called Asia and Asia took him some places where he had to go. Um, and that was her last encounter with him. And I think it was like a week and a half he had passed. And it really hurt her. And I told her, remember that time he called you, he where he needed to go, things he needed to do, you were there. So that one allowed you to be with him um, at that moment. I just want to just send love and I appreciate everybody that has a kind words, everybody that be has touched all over the world. Um, he will never be forgotten. And he will always be loved. And um, every time he wanted to call me to go somewhere, I went sometimes. I've had a lot of um, people I've met behind the scenes. I'm a behind the scenes person. Um, I've met people that uh, has put things together. Um, and it was a pleasure and it was an honor to be able to meet a lot of people that I have met. And he would get upset with me because when he would say, hey, close, close, I want you to come here. And I say, no. Well, he would get upset. Okay. I just didn't have the energy to run as much as he did. But the times that I did go, um, I was there. And I just wanted to send love um, to the family, um, to everybody that knew him, that every life that he's touched and he would never be forgotten. Still be in the mix. Mix, 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 mix. mix. Ashe, I'd like I to say you. I've been, um, I'm Lucky Harris, and I've been listening to the program ever since it's been on. And Silver B and I go back probably 30 years or longer. He would call me to take him places or pick him up when he had um, some of the young people with him or would want to have a meet with the young people, he would call and say, pick me up in your chariot. And I wanna say that there are no coincidences, but there is definitely a reason and a season for everything. And I have heard uh, different things that we like to do in the city to honor him. And one thing that really sticks out, it's something to do with our young people that would have his name on it to represent the young people of the city that are coming up to understand and not ever forget him. And tonight, by the way, there is a program that is being um, put together that has been put, put together to honor the Honorable Stephanie Tubbs Jones and Louis Stokes. And that's something that we are remembering Silver B, B, B on the same night as this honorable event is taking place. So I say to the family and we're all family, let's pray together and stay together. It's all about love, and we shall all stay in the mix, 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 mix. the mix. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm Iris, and that is exactly how Silver B knew me as Iris. I have no idea when we met, but I'm going to say maybe it was at one of the first Glenville festivals. Festivals, I always have cameras with me, and that's how we would come together. He would just, how Iris, you got your camera? And I would say <laughs> yes. And we'd go around and we'd be backstage, on stage. Sometimes I'd be up on stage um, introducing people, um, but I always had cameras with me. And he'd just take me, all right, me and him, and he'd pose and they'd pose. And I just was trying to figure out when he and I met, and I just can't. But I do know this, that whenever we met, we got together, we had a good time. The last time Amen. I saw him, I was right, I moved, I moved to Atlanta four years ago. And um, no, I moved back to Cleveland four years ago. And um, I saw him at a hip hop thing. Of course, I don't understand hip hop, but there I was, <laughs> of course, with my cameras. And he wanted to take some pictures with some of the younger guys. So we got some pictures taken. And he was it was just an honor and a privilege to know him. And we had a good time together. We just walk around people we didn't know. He would just pull them over and like, all right, 
throw his arms around him and I'd be snapping like I was, uh, I can't think of a professional photographer's name, but there I was, you know, camera mm -hmm. here and he loved it and I loved it. So what I'd like to say to everyone is I appreciate being able to come here and share my memories of Silver Bee. And I'd like to say to him, yes, sir. I I got two cameras in my bag right now. <laughs> Thank you all for letting me come. All right. One quick announcement before we get to the hot dog over here. The funeral has been changed to Mount uh, was a Zion Hill Missionary Church, one 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 five Kinsman Road. So at funeral that awakens at ten a.m. Funeral at eleven. So that's one 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 five Kinsman Avenue. Kinsman, uh, Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church. How do you got that? Yeah. No, I don't got the date. What's the date? The date. Saturday. 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 This Saturday. This Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday. Saturday, uh, Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church, 11115 Kinsman. All right. 10 a.m. is the wake, 11 a.m. is the funeral. What's that? Saturday. That's Saturday. This Saturday. A hot dog. What's going on, hot dog? You got it, EP. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, I I met Silver B uh, in 2016. The the whole radio voice at radio family at the same time. But I heard of Silver B back in in 1970s in the 70s when Mike Payne was around and Tolliver. Those were the first jobs, radio jobs I ever met was Lynn Tolliver and Mike Payne, which were the Lynn and I was real good friends, even when he passed away in February. So, and Lynn and I knew each other for 53 years. And he was a mail carrier, radio jock. I was a truck driver. And that's how I come, I didn't even meet, meet no one until about 2016. I met a lot of people, but what I'm saying, I didn't meet Silver B and them until 2016. The EP now was doing a live remote at uh, McDonald's up there on the Lee Road. That's when I met Larry H. Gardner. Chuck Conway Jr. came on and did his show out the man and B Man Banana got off. You know, they it was still just the two of us and friends. I'm I'm still on that show, which is over at Nerve DJ, but we you know I'm, Errol Porter is the EP is my guy. No doubt about it. So that's all I have to say about the B and Silver B was one of the coolest guys. We went from voice and we went to Cavante. Club Cavante, make you know about that. We went to Blue Breeze. We did a, we did Cleveland. You know, I, I retired from trucking and I got around and go do some more DJing and stuff. Sweet. All right. So All everybody right. have a blessed evening. I appreciate you. Oh, oh Miss Mrs. is in here. Mrs. Conway is in here tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everybody have a blessed one. I appreciate you guys. Uh, EP, we'll be in touch. You know that. Appreciate y'all, dog. Uh -huh. sure. Thanks. All right. Thank you. My oh, man, Jerome, what's happening? Uh, what's going on, everybody? From what I can see in here, um, we have a whole bunch of Silver B Juniors running around here. <laughs> because uh, he has, now I want y'all to imagine this. Imagine if we never had met Silver B. Imagine yeah. how your life would be different. And everybody's life in this room would be totally different. It had to go this way for us to be here today. Okay, I, I've, I've been with his sister for the last two days. So I can tell you personally that um, courage, wisdom, knowledge, all of those great attributes run in their blood. So this is not something to just, when he says royalty round table, when he says kings and queens, this is how they carry themselves. This is how we carry ourselves. I was one of the original members of the Royalty Roundtable with Lynn, of course. We started over there. I'm also a member of the Black Studies Department, and I'm the only hip-hop artist that he had uh, brought aboard to be a part of the Black Studies Department down at Cleveland State University under Dr. Uh, Michael Williams, which was another one of my mentors. Dr. Williams passed away. And not too long after that, um, I left Black Studies Department, but I never left Silver B. He uh, invited me over to Voice of Radio. So shout out to EP, because he has done an awesome job. It has to be, it feels like a decade or more. I don't know how long technically EP that you've been around with Voice of Radio, 
it feels like at least a decade, which is a long time. There we go. So we got a dozen of them under our belt. We want a dozen more. But those 12 years, a lot of that has been powered by Silver B and his support for Voices Radio and his, um, uh, what do you call that? His dedication and loyalty to this station. He, he didn't turn his back. All right, now I'm going to tell you a couple of stories about Silver B and me. And I'm going to tell you one thing. This man, at one point in time, probably checked everybody in here. <laughs> okay. And you couldn't, he one of the people that you couldn't get mad at. You want to get mad, but you can't. You have to respect what he's saying because there was some truth to what he was saying and why he was checking. I don't get checked by a lot of people, but this guy checked me, okay? About my etiquette, mm -hmm. about not being starstruck because he had put you around a lot of prominent people mm -hmm. and he had to be able to trust that you weren't going to jump over his back and talk to these people. Wait till your turn. I'll get you in there. I got you in the door to be able to be this close. Now you getting jittery and stuff, sit, sit your down <laughs> because I got an assignment for you. Relax. But you, you know, you, you like a kid. Another time, COVID came. It's been about a year since I seen Silver. Everybody was shut down, year, year and a half. He asked me for a fish dinner before COVID came. COVID came and went. He came to me and he said, where's my fish dinner? This is a year and a half later. Exactly. During that whole time, though, for a year and a half, I thought about his fish dinner because I, was, I knew I was wrong for not giving him that dinner. He got that dinner. <laughs> I made sure of that. You know what I mean? So these are the things that the silver put inside of us on a respect level. As That's a right. parent, uh, right. he addressed everyone as king and queen. We address everybody as king and queen. Like I said, we come from the royalty round table. I was on, I was his co-host for two years and he taught me priceless uh, memories. There's a lot of people that love him. So I'm going to cut this it's kind of short. I also want a seven in the mix. You know what I mean? Because he meant so much to everybody and we must pay proper respect. And we must never forget him. All right. So on the count of three again, I want that. Silver B in the mix, 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 okay. mix, 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 mix. <laughs> so that's 14 of them. I know, really. <laughs> On the count of three, we love you, Silver B. We miss you and we forever honor your name. One, two, three. Silver B. Mix, 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 mix. <laughs> Hey, uh, we got my man Nate Simpson joining us in. Nate right Simpson. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, fam. How's everybody doing tonight? All right. Good, good, good. Um, I, it's, it's a great thing that um, you guys are doing in honor of Brother Silver. Um, we lost um, some great champions over the past uh, since the COVID um, has hit us. And um, it is with um, a lot of humility that you guys gave me the opportunity to speak to you in regards to our beloved brother, um, Silver. I call him, I just called him B. I've called him B for decades, you know, and um, I respect the fact that that was his tag name with everybody. And uh, he, he became what, what I classify um, as a tag name called the, uh, the urban icon. So, Absolutely. Um, right. He, um, uh, I, it's so much so much history that uh, he and I have together. I, get the uh, I was looking at the actual chronological time you know, with everything with his family uh, as we were getting together, you know, the specifics for his home going. And um, they were showing me just his, you know, childhood pictures, you know, all the way back to when he was, you know, two years old and four years and seven years old. And then it was, I was like, wow. And, um, you know, that's the part that we didn't get to see. Um, but I met Silver when I was actually 15, going on 16 years old, uh, coming out of junior high into high school over at East High doing the talent show. And uh, he had his radio show. He had just started out of his home. 
and then he was able to get that um, facility right, that was right off of Farmington in East Cleveland, and he would um, actually come and look for all the talent that um, he could find. And then we then we grew and, and grew and grew, and um, our careers became very um, important to the community and to Cleveland. And um, I went on tour uh, with um, – a couple of other artists, uh, the Wilson Brothers, the Gap Band, which is the Gap Band. Mm -hmm. And I did a bunch of other uh, shows around uh, with uh, Vesta Williams, et cetera. And uh, I came back to Cleveland. And um, when I came back home, um, he, I was um, asked to come to a place called Bells on the Circle. It used to be the old red carpet. And um, that's where they had a thing called the Black Caucus. And uh, during that time at the Black Caucus, um, there was uh, our first female um, Black congressman, Miss Shirley Chisholm. And Congressman, the Congressman Louis Stokes of the 11th District was representing us here in our home, hometown. And um, Bill actually um, introduced me to my wife at the Black Caucus. Um, and um, Kimberly was actually Shirley Chisholm's um, right-hand person. And I didn't know how tied in B had gotten with uh, Congressman Lewis Stokes and Don Scott, who owned Bells, and uh, Val, who he named the actual uh, venue after. Uh, it used to just be the red carpet, and he named it Bells on the circle, which was after his wife. And Silver was so intertwined with them. Um, all the way back with Tony T, uh, just a lot of great DJs at that time. And um, I was present during that time when um, he was actually named uh, the czar uh, to handle all music that came throughout the 11th district. That means anything throughout Cuyahoga County, Akron, uh, northern and southern part of Ohio. Um, he was given that title as the czar and actually uh a uh, official letter from Congressman Lewis Stokes at that time in front of everybody. And I don't know if too many people can go back um, to remember the Miss Ross talent shows um, mm -hmm. that used to be um, at Bells on the Circle and at the um, rehearsals with the Coco Ballroom. And she would have them either at Public Hall or uh, the Agora Ballroom, which was uh, at that time WHK Auditorium. And uh, B was hosting all those for the late, great Mr. Hank LeConte. And he got, got his um, czar's proclamation from Congressman Lewis Stokes, and Scott became the limit for him. He, at that point, uh, became the person that anybody in entertainment that came through the city, uh, and I always used to say from Michael Jackson on down, because there's so many artists that he helped introduce and his whole claim to fame was the marginal um, artist. He loved local artists. He just loved regional and local artists to do what he could to promote and get them going. So uh, these are these are my um, great memories going back decades. And we're fortunate uh, to be called, um, uh, and I tag the term decade walkers because uh, we didn't just have a, a quick meet and greet with one another where we were on, um, maybe somebody sold us a car or we had somebody do something for us in a grocery store or, you know, we just had a doctor's visit and in and out or we went to school with somebody for a year, two or three. Um, all of us, all of us are literally, literally decade walkers. So I, um, I'm so humbled to have had the opportunity, and I'm sure everybody is, to have had the opportunity to embrace his walk, his, his faith walk, actually. It, it, it never changed. Uh, he, he, was a, he was a pioneer. He was a pace setter. Um, and he had no children. And I used, to, um, I used to wonder why I never heard him talk about children, but he always talked about family. They always talked about the union of what we should be doing as a family. And um, after going through his um, 
chronological autobiography with his family over the past, you know, two to three days and seeing the quality of his family and the pictures and the heritage and just the supreme photos that family gatherings was doing. And they were taken in professional settings. I was just like, wow, this is this, this guy had it going on from way back in the day. And he was an educated man on top of it. So it wasn't like he was just saying it off the cuff of his mind or just from experiences. He actually went back and got education on it and uh, really studied studied the Quran, studied uh, the book of Yahweh, uh, studied the Holy Bible. So he was well versed as far as how he wanted to deliver his message while he was walking amongst us. And I am, um, you know, I, I had my moment of, of, of tearing up, um, probably like everyone else. Um, but I guess I'm probably gonna do a little bit more after everything is said and done when we get the home going and get it out the way, I'll probably, you know, do what I do. I go into the forest and um, when I have loved ones that I know that have been indelible in my life and I, I, I just go in the forest and have a talk with you I know I scream out as loud as my voice can carry me um, but we have just a whole plethora of blessings that that man's life has contributed um, for and, and for voice of radio to be um, a catalyst to continuing his purpose in life. Uh, that that within itself is a beautiful thing because he loved uh, black media upon all genres, whether it was radio or television. Uh, and now technologically, um, he just loved um, anything that had anything to do with black ownership uh, or, or people coming together in the community. He was a strong uh, proprietor of the 11th district from Congressman Lewis Stokes to Stephanie Tubbs Jones to Martha Fudge uh, and now um, to Miss Chantel Brown. So um, it's just so much that I can actually say, but the bottom line, what I want to do is just honor all of you, all of you for extending your arm and embracing your spirit around this one incredible individual. I will say this one thing in, in my closing of what I want to say. Um, during the um, late great uh, Lynn Tolliver's home going, um, which is all, who was also a huge pioneer in the uh, Cleveland area and across Ohio and in the music industry, um, we were together um, the majority of that day and that morning. Um, Mr. The great Mr. Chuck Conway and I actually came to the home going together, but um, Silver actually demanded that I come and sit with him. And as we sat together, it just felt like old times, like, you know, teacher, student, um, you know, you know what I want you to do kind of thing. And um, it was really a lot of, you know, things going on without words being said or him telling me or me knowing what he wanted me to do. And so I did. But during the course of that day, uh, he cried twice. And uh, I thought that he was crying because of Lynn. And he was, but it was more deeper than just crying because of uh, our beloved other brother, King Lynn Tolliver. He was um, crying because he said that he didn't feel that the city and uh, media and all the artists that Lynn had helped over the many, many, many years with the turkey jams and so many other things with radio play and introducing artists, they didn't celebrate him. The artists did not celebrate Lynn right. And he said, don't let them do that to me. And um, uh, I was like, wow, I didn't see it that way. But now that you said it, I get it. And um, so that was my one thing to do, to be that uh, deep of an instrument in his home going and all the activities that went on in his home going, I made it sure that my footprint and my fingerprint is on everything because I know what he told me, what he wanted. And um, I was fortunate enough to roll with him during the COVID season um, a lot. And I even had to take down my, uh, take unfriend him from my Facebook um, because he was just, he was just blowing my Facebook page up with, with voice of radio, with everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, man, you're not letting nobody else you know, get on my page. He said, yeah, but I know you get, you know everybody, so I, I will go through you. And I was like, okay. So what he would do, he would just text me. He would just text me. Um, 
just here's um the radio show and the album turned over as the guard and I was sending my email as well. So just to know that we had that quality of leaders, um, we just don't want to we don't want to we don't want to lose people like Earl Porter and Al Al Porter and and Art McCoys and Louis Moores and and and, and uh, Marys and and other people that are so so um, strong out here, men and women that are so strong and we forget we we have to do what we should have been doing all along and i'm making it my business and i'm going to add voice to radio to do this in honor of him because i know we do uh lynn tolliver turkey jam i'm going to ask if there's a music award if there's a music award to give from whether it be the Ohio valley music awards or whatever it may be to actually name a trophy an award trophy mm -hmm. in honor of brother william silver b richards Ashay, Ashay, yes. And, and, and I think that that would do him honor for generations to come to yeah. know that yeah. he, he contributed that beat. And Thank you, I my hope brother. That, um, we can co collectively get together and come up with uh, whatever award to make sure that we have that award in his name. So I'm going to leave it at that point. And I would say, God bless. Thank you. And as my brother and I would say to one another, he probably said to everybody, as long as you know, Yah, you're going to be okay. Amen. Ashe. Amen. Amen. It's all Amen. about love. I, I know what I'm, <laughs> I'm a, you know what I'm going to say? Listening to What's what, that, was listening to Silver Bean, this goes for every, listening to the 11th Congressional District. And since I do politics, I'm going to call out to everybody else from Chantel Brown to Mayor Justin Bibb to Blaine Griffin, the, to all the city council people from War One to War 17, to every single person that Silver B helped along with the rest of us. I want all three. If you do two out of the three, I'd be fine. I want a school named after. I want a street named after. And, yeah, yeah. A, and a, and, a, and a day, declaration day, named after William Silver B. Richards. I want, uh, since I Mayor, that would, Mayor, yeah, that would be just mm -hmm. reach. Yeah. Yes. Mayor Justin did, did a declaration for Machine Gun Kelly. That's all well and good. But we need one for not only Silver B, but Lynn Tolliver as well. So I'm going to That's call right. out all my city people, especially the ones that I helped get elected, like Councilman Joe That's Jones right. of World One and Mayor Justin Bibb, who's a mayor now. So I'm going to yeah. call out all my judges. All the people that Silver B touched, especially his cousin Chantel Brown, who's the Congresswoman now. So the thing about Amen. it is, is that I want those African American men honored. I don't want no more slaves honored. We just turned Patrick Henry into Seventy Chubbs Jones. Shout out to um, Councilman Kevin Conwell for making that happen. Because we don't want. I'm gonna say this right now. I don't want. I want positive African Americans. Right. If we're going to put our African-American boys and girls in these schools, I want positive African-American men and women to be honored, yes, yes. especially right. the ones that made yes. impact in our own community. Forget these slave owners. Forget a Patrick Henry. I want a Stephanie Chubbs Jones. I want a William Silver B. Rich. I want a Lynn Tolliver School. That's right. School of come Science on. and Music. School come, of come Education, on, edu and, education mm -hmm. and Entertainment. To be, yep. I want those schools to be named after them because if we're teaching our young boys and girls to be great, how can we teach them to be great when the school is named after a dang slave owner? Dang there that. Excuse me. Damn that. Let a <laughs> Silver B. Richard school be named. Let a Lynn Tolliver school be I named. Silver B. always called me Mr. Controversy, and I had to, I couldn't leave here until I said that. So I'm going to go ahead and let Lady T speak because of the simple fact that the matter is he always... They're like the thing about it is, is like sometimes, like the late great uh, Tupac Shakur said, you know, some of the it was like Jesus to Judas, Judas to Jesus. Some of these people are here to cause confusion, and I'm not causing no confusion right now. I'm just telling you the truth. There should be. You talk about an award. We gave a street. That's right. To Leon Bibb. Shout out to him. Yes, we, we need a street yes, named after Silver B and Lynn Tolliver. We need a school named That's after right. Silver B and Lynn okay. Tolliver. We need a declaration yes. of the day. Listen, I understand MGK is a great. Ashel, he was from Shaker Heights, Ohio. But the thing about it is, we can get after him, we can get after B. You know I mean? That's right. That's right. Mix. 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 I don't think I got no mix on him. 
Hey, 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 hey. Don't drop my mic. <laughs> wow. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> well, I've been knowing Susan B for a long time when I lived on East Boulevard, the big old house. I used to see him do parades. I was 12, sitting on top of the roof. That's where they started the parades from. Right. The Glenville parades. And <laughs> I just, you know, I've been everywhere I met, he's there at a different event or entertainment event. He it is true. He's been around a a lot of celebrities, because I used to work with them too. At you know, I would promote concerts with Fred G, and so it would be be right there. So you know, I just want to. I cried when I first heard about it, but I cried on everybody. I'm just a crybaby. I, do, I want to um, say one thing. I want to say one thing, brother Ella. Listen, um, right before COVID hit, if everyone could remember, I had the great privilege of bringing into Cleveland from Ghana, Africa. King the name King Apatui to, to the United States. And I focused on bringing them here to Cleveland with uh, the great Mr. Cleo Miller of the Cleveland Browns up under the Marcus Garvey um, Association. And in doing so, um, he himself, Brother Silver B, and I must say he was the only person that I trusted to stay with the Kings, um, to be in the property with the Kings night and day, as long as he wanted to, to be my eyes when I had to go back and forth and do my due diligence. And that is the level of dignity okay. that he had and in regards to constituents, not just local politicians, but that kind of global um, iconic situation that was for the 400th year of slavery these were the actual kings from ghana which is the same country the same part of africa that slaves were shipped out through the pania and the other ships that brought mm -hmm. us and our ancestors and our ancestors ancestors to this country they came directly to the united states and to go to the United Nations to let them know, let everyone know that enough is enough and to get African-Americans, black people to reinvest into one another. And they offered a package that was second to none economically, economically and land back into Africa um, that is still on the table to this day. Uh, we, we will submit that package, but I do want to let you know that Brother Silver B was with me during the seven days of them being here. And only he, Grandmaster Mayo as well, and uh, Brother Zach um, Lewis, um, I had doing private, private security outside of the um, um, National or Homeland Security. So I totally agree with everything you're saying. I personally don't think that we have had anyone, and I mean underscore neon, anyone as iconic that was that humble with that much power other than Silver B walking around here. He just did not meet Congress people. He networked with senators. He networked with presidents. He networked with kings. So make no mistake, um, I don't know anyone that had his resume, point blank, period, that we period. have known in the past 40 years. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Yes. I love you all, and I look forward to uh, seeing you on Saturday morning at the uh, great um, Zion uh, Hill Missionary Baptist Church up under the leadership of Pastor Jimmy Gates at 1115 Kinsman Avenue. Uh, you can't miss it. We just had the 11th District uh, Parade uh, Monday, which went, which was uh, a block and a half away from Luke Easter Park, where we all uh, wound up uh, ending our parade. And that's a big church that's right there. And uh, Saturday morning, I look forward to seeing as many of you as possible. 
in regards to his family, on behalf of his family. He has a beautiful family. And I want you to wrap you guys to wrap your arms around his family and say a prayer for his family for peace because they also know that they have lost a great, great king in their bloodline. So we want to make sure that we cover their family as well. Amen. Okay, God bless. Talk to you guys soon. One love. Well, this is Twain Moneta, Conway's wife. I want to say I've been seeing Civil B since I was 12. I grew up on East Boulevard, and that's where they originated the parade from. And he would be at the parade all the time. So I want to say I've been knowing him for a long time. And he likes my name because I have a Nigerian name, and he's very up on culture of Africa. And my father is Nigerian. So my name is Twai Moneta. And he used to, every, every time he see me, he would say, Twai Moneta. <laughs> Twai Moneta. Like what you doing, Twai Moneta? Yeah. Um, I'm going to miss him a lot because he's, he, he was well known, and like I said, he knows a lot of entertainers. He knows a lot, celebrities and all that. And um, I'm heartbroken, like I was with Lynn Tolliver. I'm heartbroken. I was able to be on a radio show and speak with them and everything, and they were good mentors to me. I went to school for broadcasting, but I had already known how to uh, promote concerts. I used to work with Fred for years. So I'm going to miss Silver B. And um, I'm going to miss him in his African outfit. That one that mm -hmm. stuck out that I'm going to miss and remember. He had on this white gold outfit. Was he sharp? Was he sharp with them gloves on? I'm going to miss him. And my condolences to his family. Love and prayer. That's right. All right. What's up? Michael Brown Jr., aka Major Taps. Say, um, wow. I met Silver B at Cleveland School of the Arts. I was 12 years old. And uh he just stood out. He was just <laughs> Yeah, Silver B, man. I met him at Cleveland School of Arts, and this guy, he just stood out. He was always motivating all the students. Always his favorite line was, uh, young man, <laughs> young man, you got a line or anything, young man. Uh -oh. um, he always had this certain sayings he would say, and it would stick with you in your mind. He would just approach you. He would just put you aside personally and just tell you something, um, something motivational. You know, it stuck with you and stuff. Every time you've seen this man, um, I could pretty say, yeah, from the age from 12 to now, um, I'm in my 30s now. Um, this man basically around Cleveland and, and sat back and watched me grow up. Uh, I could say, describing Mr. would be, he's like a, when it comes to talent wise and scouting talent around Cleveland, he's like a Professor X. Yeah, anybody hip to X Men? He he puts you in mind of a, a, a oh, literally yeah. a Professor X. Yep. He pulls you to the side and just yeah yeah teaches your your gifts and things of that nature and stuff. He always referred to me as the Tapper, you know. I love tap, you know. Um, always expressed to Silver B how much um I had a passion for music. Somehow he just you know he just encouraged me. He like son. Push both those things. That's how I was able to come up with, you know, uh, me as an artist, you know. Um, and I, man, shout out for some of the things he did as far as I mean, one time, Glenwood Festival, this was um, some years back. And um, a lot of people have seen me for my talents with my, my my hoofing, my tapping skills, but a lot of people haven't seen me as far as with uh what I could do as far as on the mic and the music and things of that nature. And that time I wanted to be different from other artists, you know. So I wanted to express 
my my um along with my tap and also you know what I'm saying my MCing too on the mic, you know. Um so uh Glenville Festival, they acknowledged the fact that that I was a tapper. They wanted me just to come on and perform as a tapper, you know. At that time, um I don't form myself as major taps. And so uh it was a thing with I guess one of the guys that was running the whole uh Glenville Festival that year. Um, they didn't want to acknowledge me just to get on the mic and perform along with me tapping because I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, show both of those skills and stuff. Right. And so um, it was a big thing. So I was like, okay, well, you guys want to see my tapping? You, you know what I'm saying? You got, I want you guys to hold package, basically. So, I mean, it wouldn't, I feel like it wouldn't be, uh, I might as well not even perform then because you're not going to see, you know what I'm saying, my, my my all my raw talent you know so uh so it was a thing where i was not gonna do the glenville festival that year and so i went back um somehow i got in touch with silver b i went back i was for i went back and talked to silver b silver b was like well you know yeah they wanted to see you you know also do the tapping son you know um i, I expressed to silver b and encourage him you know but not encourage what he encouraged me i expressed to him how i want Wanted to showcase this. I know this is the first time thing I'm doing this though, but let me express and show them. I'm gonna give them that tap. They want to see that tap and don't let me also, you know what I'm saying, show them what I can do. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna give them the mic and say nothing goofy. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with what I'm saying. Right. So, um, so uh, he went back. He like just hold on, chill. Same thing with what Dollar said. Jerome, brother Jerome said, um, hold on, son, just be patient. You got them gibberies and stuff. Just be patient because I was like, man, what's up? <laughs> so he went back and talked to the uh. Talked to the guy that was running the um on the whole show back in that year, and he got me on the stage, and I was able to perform on a nice main stage and everything, express you know, and get, be able to promote and you know, so just pass out my flyers and my my CDs, and from then on, he just told me um my my hoofer instructor passed. He was very inspirational around that time. He was like, um, he's like, son, are you going through a certain situation now? Though, um, uh, what you need to do is just push his legacy on. You know, and you know, so with the things that he, you know, what I'm saying, and uh, my instructor taught me, you know, so I just basically said, I'm gonna take that into, uh, I'm gonna take that, um, take that in, yeah, I'm gonna push it like hooping, like everybody talking about it's a lost talent, things of that nature, though. Silver B was always the person you always seen that he seen I was different from other ones, like even when I went to Cleveland School of Arts, I was the only. Literally though, I got in, I got in through Cleveland School of Arts through audition. Um, wow. and it was through I got in through my tapping, you know, <laughs> not niche, you know, I got in through my tapping. And mind you though, I was the only one. I got my major was dance, you know. Um, it was certain things, mind you, it was certain things in dance that I was not cool with the whole ballet and all that though. But they was telling you, you know, <laughs> yeah, they I, they made me do ballet at Christmas exactly. Day. I, I could not look like. I was, mind you, I was the only tap dancer there. It was no tap dance teachers, though. So I was different from other students, though. We are, the mind you, though, it was a lot of talent there. Like, I was from, come from the area from, uh, I remember when Silver B used to push fully equipped. Mm -hmm. You remember fully equipped? Yeah, yeah. Got Corey and all them. Shout out to them. Where y'all at, man? I love y'all. Um, shout out to Pocket, N Niggles and, no, Cat, uh, yeah, Niggles and Dime. You know, shout out to Carl. Wow. His hope, you know, his brothers, and you no, know, I grew up, I was around that era when when, uh, when it came to uh, Cleveland School of Arts and met wearing to Silver B. Um, man, uh, like I said, he put together the hip hop workshop. If it wasn't for him, like we wouldn't have had the opportunity to literally like perform, you know what I'm saying? Every, every, every first Saturday of the month at the workshop, you know, um, it's gonna be different for real. Um, <laughs> Just not seeing them around anymore, especially at the Kings Arts Festival. Like I said, I know you need to check everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need to put you up, brought you back down to earth. You know, um, so he's just very man, encouraging, motivational. So be love you, man. I wish you the best in your transition. Um, in the mix, 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 mix. mix, mix, mix. <laughs> Oh yeah, Al Porter and BMA uh, family to give a shout out. He's supposed to be going that way too. Uh, he told me about uh, uh, Hello, everybody.
Peace and blessings. Um, my name is uh, Derek. Derek Taylor. I go by Ken Y, P Y, the word Y. Um, I've been a co-host, uh, special co-host with the Voice of Radio, the Royal Round Table, for a long time. Everybody talking about the reminiscing about Uncle B and the last man that spoke. He had said something about what if he wasn't in our lives. And that's the first time I got choked up, like really choked up about Uncle B because every time I felt with the tears, I remember him telling me, suck it up, young man. You know, you got to be a man. It's time to, huff, you know, huff it, up, huff it through, you know, like he told you. And um, so all I've been thinking the whole time is that his voice got to live on. Yeah. His voice really has to live on. We have to say his name, Silver B. Silver B. Silver B. And uh, he always made me tell this about every time I spoke or anything about, um, and, and, and the young brother that was uh, speaking earlier about, you know, make, making a holiday for him, a street for him. I want to call out somebody too. And um, he always brought this up because it was a, a historical moment in my life. It let me know I was really about hip hop. I lived hip hop before I realized I was about hip hop. And uh, I want to call out Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, because uh, I think he needs to be inducted into it for Cleveland, for hip hop around the, the country. But I think um, so. He had me on the youngest board to get hip hop inducted in there. And um, that was the main thing that stood out to me because because that's when he made me realize that I wasn't a rapper. I wasn't a street dude. I wasn't nothing. I was a voice. I had spoke up for Tupac um, to get him inducted because they didn't want his image in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I'm going to speak about it again. And um, it really bothered me because he helped guide me through a lot of stuff in my troubles growing up as a fatherless kid, you know, in a single parent home. And uh, that's how Uncle B met me, wilding out. Um, wow. at, at uh, Collinwood High School, they had merged uh, high schoolers with middle schoolers. We from Margaret Spellacy, and uh, I started running with I don't know if y'all hip to, but eight half and you know, Q Money and them from we started that, and um, so we was you know, doing our young thing, fighting in the hallway, and his voice. He said, young man, <laughs> and, he, and I stopped like my granddaddy was talking to me. Young man. And uh, he pulled me to the side. He said, are you representing your ancestors right now? Doing what you're doing? And I'm 6'6". Six, six, and this guy's like five with five. Six, <laughs> five like, I'm like, dude, like, who is you talk? No, nah, I ain't going to mess with this dude. And he made us all line up and do push-ups. Do push-ups. <laughs> oh, wow, that's crazy. Man. And what was crazy was, was that I was so shook. I was like, disbelief. My father never made me do something like that. Oh. He's from the military, you know. But I had trouble doing my push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me 10 more. <laughs> and, and then he said I, I couldn't finish them. And so he said, you run around here acting like a fool and you can't even finish 20 push-ups. Mm. Wow. And he said, I'm gonna make sure you do them 20 push-ups by the end of the week. Mm. And I've been by his side ever since. Mm. Right on. Um, he starts showing up to my neighborhood, all my homies. And he used to pull us all to my mom's yard. And he used to tell us like, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing right now. You know, we're not serving our community the right way by carrying ourselves and fighting and stuff like that. And I swear every young man that he talked to, to this day, we done been in trouble. When he did some things, but to this day, they doing the right thing though. They got through the weeds, and that's what Uncle Ben instilled in us. We gotta find ourselves, uh -huh. and that's one thing he always instilled in me, is to find out who I am and what I was about. And I found out I had a voice, so I speak whenever I can. And, I, and, I, and then Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he told me like the other man said, he said, "Wait your turn," because I was the youngest dude there. You had guys from New York, you had guys from No Limit. Um, he brought them to our school. He brought Master P, Silk the Shocker, and Mystical. And Mystical was one of my, my best artists. I was really like, oh, uh, Mystical here. And he introduced me to him. I got to walk out with him and ride in the, uh, the, uh, the limo with him, wow. with Uncle B. And I was only like 15, I think 15 or something like that. And this is the first time I'm around actual famous people. I'm like, I'm from 84th and Superior and, and Nottingham. I'm from the bottom for real. 
No, it's famous people over there. Yeah, I came from right. a, I grew up on 80. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I'm talking about Steve Harvey. Oh, and yeah. Arsenio, Very, I date Hall, actually. She picked my dad over Arsenio Hall. Wow. So, yeah, it's a, he, he enlightened me of the history of where I was around. He, he made me realize that I wasn't in the gutter. He made me realize the value in, in where I was and be proud of where I was to this day. <laughs> and everywhere I go, um, I get memories of him. And, um... <laughs> wow. Oh. That's what we can't lose uh -huh. is the memories. That's right. Takes and and, and he need to be inducted in whatever they gonna offer because he saved so many people. I guarantee. If we keep this this show going, and in his memory, I hope it does. But it'll be so many people coming in for for at least years talking mm -hmm. about him alone, and I just think that the community, Cleveland, the entertainment world. They need to remember Silver B. They need to remember him. And we all need to remember each other. And that's on my soul. My uncle told me to say something for him. He used to call me before he died. He used to call me for food. And I'd be like, man, Silver B know everybody. You know, why is he calling me, you know? <laughs> and one time, you know, I couldn't do it. He got mad. He got real bad, and me and him, he checked me. And at one time, I stood up, and I, I said, no, I'm not going for that. I spoke up, and I stood up to him in a respectable manner. And he texted me back, and he apologized to me for the first time ever. I ever heard this man had to apologize to somebody or anything, but he told me he made a mistake. Oh. And the greatest man in my life that I ever met, he let me know he can make mistakes, too. Amen. So I just want to let you know, Uncle B, you keep calling on me, man, because you've been guiding me in the right direction. You've been giving me the strength I didn't know I had. You let Amen. me know the talents that I didn't know I had. And you let me know I'm a leader. So I'm not you let every man you know that he called a nephew. He started calling me Godson, and it shook me, took my breath away. But he called his nephews uncles and cousins and stuff like that because we are family and we got to recognize that for a change. Yep. That's what this is about. The Royal Roundtable family. This is a family. So it's not just about entertainment. It's about being a family and bringing all our talents to the table and coming together and making it something. So if if, if I can right. be part of the show continuously, if it is continuing, if it's not or, or whatnot, we can continue with ourselves because we got the media. We got social media. And I think like we should every Wednesday, we should all meet up on social media and just say, you know, in the mix, in the mix, 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 at seven o'clock, you know, and just post a hashtag just out of respect for the man, man. We got to keep his voice going. And I'm, I'm going to sign out like that, you know, much love to Ashe, everybody. Ashe. Anyway, this Saturday, we better bring it. I think everybody should do some push ups for him, too. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Uh, right. <laughs> right. We've all heard of, oh, man, heard of an enforcer. And, and, and one, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. One thing, I, I broke my back. I worked so hard, I broke my back. And, and he taught me to do don't don't leave the field without leaving it all on the table. That's what happened. But when I went and got my epidurals and stuff, he was right there. Oh. Mm -hmm. was there. Mm -hmm. All of them was there, but when he came in, it made me feel a little bit more yeah. confident. And, and he was there for me when my dad was having surgery, heart surgery, real bad heart surgery. He showed, he stopped. He had some important meetings ago. I told him what was going on. And he was the only one that showed up for me at the hospital for him. So I, I not only finished my 20, man, I helped other kids, and other people around me. They finished and they 20. And, 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 and I'm and I'm gonna do that for him. I'm gonna keep motivating people. Like he motivated me, you know? And, and like I said, anything I could be a part of, my um, email is D-E-R-T-I-G-N-E-R -E -E at gmail.com. I got a Facebook. I got one, it's called Eon Akil. That's A-E-O-N-A-K-I-L. And that's, that's my Facebook. And I have a business called Great Royals.
And what we do is property preservation. We do things in the community. We do donations. We do food drives. We do whatever we can, um, scrapping, landscaping. And 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 all I want to do is let people know is that tag me. Um, and, and I want to help other people make money and, and do things and keep things committed in the family like we supposed to. Right on, man. Appreciate it. Can, can I ask you to repeat that one more time? Because I did not get that. I want to write your information down. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, my um, my name is uh Derek Tigner, and my Gmail is at d e r t i g n e r at gmail dot com. Sorry, ass bitch. And the name of my business is called Great, and that's G R eight Royals R Y L. Um, I'm sorry, R O Y. I'm sorry, I'm still messed up. R O Y A L L L C, and we do have a website. <laughs> That's uh, greatroyals.com, and we do have a Facebook. All right. We got, um, appreciate you, brother. Aisha. Yes. Do you want to say something, Aisha? No. <laughs> no. Not really. Okay. Uh, but, uh, Natalie or Tama, did you want to say, give some words? Uh-uh. All righty. So we're going we gonna to go on, uh, Lady T. What's going on? Hello? What's going on? Um, first, I want to give honor to God because that's what, what the first thing that Silver always said when he called me. Let's give honor to God first. The second thing is that yeah. on behalf of my organization, BWE and Black Women of Excellence and BWE Future Kids, um, we, we extend our condolences to the family of Silver B. I have many memories uh, of Silver. Um, but the one that really stuck out the most was actually this year. Um, I was so humbly honored for him to come to, you know, come to the lab and, you know, just embrace his, uh, you know, presence just in, the, in in my home. Like it was like having a rock star there, you know, for the first time. And I didn't even know he was coming. So he surprised me, but, you know, he was very encouraging. You know, when his brother, brother said he was very motivating. And, you know, throughout the course, since I've been around and knowing uh, Uncle Silver, he always encouraged my son. He's always encouraged my daughter. He didn't try to get my son to do the 20 push-ups to, <laughs> you know, please believe that. But, you know, he always strived for us to be excellent in everything that we did. And, you know, when I told him that I wanted to honor Ken Ferguson in February, and honor Aniana DeFries and Rob Rose. He just automatically got on the phone and said, I'm about to call this person and this person and this person. <laughs> and, this. and I said, thanks, Uncle Silver. And, and I asked him, are you going to be a part of the show? He said, I surely would. And, you know, and he helped push my project. He believed in the mission that, you know, that I was trying to do and my team. So, you know, I'm very grateful and, you know, humbly honored to be called his goddaughter. You know, and when I did music at the workshop for the first time, I was able to perform for him for the very first time at the workshop this year. And he was like, you know, you sound like Missy Elliott when you rap. And, you know, that was encouraging to me. So, you know, what I take from Uncle Silver is that you always put God first in everything that you do and you encourage and motivate others to be the best that they can be. So, you know, I'm deeply saddened to get the news. Um, I was actually uh, the right before he passed. Me and my daughter actually tried to come go to the hospital to bring flowers, just so he know that I, I was there, you know. And I just love him so much for just you know his encouragement and his embracement and his support. Um, you know, in my last phone call with him, he was checking on my son, you know, because he got hit by a drunk driver, oh. and you know he called me, and you know he's like, daughter. You know, how's my son? How's my godson doing? I said he's doing fine. You know, we just you know worried about him. You know, he said don't worry, just put it in God's hands. And that's what I did. And you know, for those that are here that actually see me walk in, he actually walked in with me today. So with that, with that faith and that encouragement from Uncle Silver, I'm just you know so 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 honored and you know to meet him and you know be able to be in his presence and. It's a tremendous loss to the city of Cleveland, and it's a tremendous loss to all of us. And I just want to say I love him. 
All right. Hey, Robert Cruz in the building. What's going Robert on? Cruz. Cruz. What's going on, man? Getting that mic. There I just go. want to say, uh, when I first met Silver, this is before I got with the Rue Boys. Every time I see him, he say, man, make sure your life stand for something. Make sure your life stand for something. Mm-hmm. Can I cuss on here, man? It's like a- this is one hell of a guy, though, man. I love oh, Silver, yeah. man. He called me on my birthday, trying to make it to my party. I had a party at my house. And he called me like, hey, I can't, I don't have nobody to bring me to your party, man. I couldn't leave because of my party. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I ain't got nobody to bring me because I didn't know that he was sick. Right. You know, so I just want to say I love him, man. He meant a lot to me, meant a lot to everybody in Cleveland. When I cut on my computer the day that he passed, Man, everybody on there was putting pictures of Silver B like he was right. the president. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Silver B, hey, we Silver B. I see. I'm like, wait a minute. So I called Sir Not. You know Sir Not. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, man, we lost him. So we love you, Silver. I'll see we everybody on you. Saturday. I will be there. And uh, like you said, love everyone, man. Right on. That's right. Peace. Love Peace. Peace. Right. Suave Gotti in the building. Going Suave. On, uh, how you feeling? Excellent. All right. Glad to be here with everybody. So we can talk about Silver B. I can't hear. I said I uh just glad to be here amongst the uh, people that Silver B had respect for, you know, in a closed environment where not a whole lot of uh people. To talk about Silver B. You know, um, I had just been had been with B like not too many days before he passed away. And uh within the 30 days that we had an opportunity for me to take him down to Canton so that he could get on the microphone at this event and uh he did his thing down there. <laughs> Then, you know, I was able to, uh, you know, hip him on to certain things that he was, uh, he found interest in because, you know, he was trying to get his weight up, you know, because he had lost a lot of weight. So I was able to get him um, back to get himself an air fryer, you know what I'm saying? So we went and got him an air fryer and, uh, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to eat, get his weight up, you know, he was doing his. You know, his thing. And he was doing what he, you know, what Silver B do, you know, trying to get himself together. Uh, I've known Silver B since the early 80s. When I when I when I encountered Silver B, he was on the streets of downtown Cleveland. He had a group called the Silver Explosion. He was the head over a, a, a dancing crew that all wore silver representing him. Okay, so it was like four of them, Teddy, Ted, and a few other people. Okay, so <laughs> when I first seen him, he, he was representing a bunch of young people and taking them around and letting them do their thing and stuff. Okay? Oh. So that's how far back I've known Silver B. Since then, I was able to travel to different cities with Silver B. Me and Joe Jones, who's now the councilman of the Lee and Harvard area, me and him and Silver B, we went to BET for BET Awards once and stayed in hotels for days. You know, this was back in 1990, the same week Mariah Carey came out with her first album. How do I know? Because I bought it and I was playing it all the way down to Washington. <laughs> like, I liked it more. I thought Mariah Carey's first album was dope. <laughs> yeah, man, I loved it. That, 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 uh, Vis- you know, girl, whatever. Right? Yeah. I almost said white girl, but she ain't all the way white. That's why I said whatever. But anyway, then once he took me down to Detroit to where his family is. You None know, of that matters. Be, so we'll be talking a lot about Detroit. Motown, that was very- yeah, I was so. Very, very okay. important to him, Motown was. So I went down there, stayed in the house with his family and all his family was all women, all <laughs> girls. So he had me in that house with them for days, you understand? And I came out of that house with a very good reputation amongst his, 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 uh, nieces and all of them. I can't, you know what I'm saying? And uh, 
me and him had a little experience with the school and things while we was down there. But I loved the experience. It was it was beautiful. So, you know, I've done a lot with Silver B. And uh, I talked to him a lot intimately. One of the things I'm proud of with Silver B, very, very proud of, and I like to go in places where a lot of people are scared to go. I can go in those places. I'm not scared to go in those places. So first of all, I am very proud that from <laughs> watching this man from being a child to 52 years old right now, he never ever tried no hanky-panky or nothing stupid or silly like some of these cats who like New York Y'all yeah. got a whole different yeah. vibe going y'all way yes. from y'all Godfather hip hop. But when I looked at the Cleveland Godfather hip hop, straight, yeah. straight. The whole yeah. time. Now somebody else might have something for story. I don't know your story, but I watched them. And from what yeah. I see, from 1982 yeah. to yeah. 2022, the same dude in front and behind the camera. Now yeah. that's Amen. my that's my speaking of the brother. That's why I'm here. Because if he had done something to me crazy when I was young, I wouldn't be here lying for everybody to make nobody happy. I'm just proud that that man was always the same. And what, yes. and he was serious. To me, I had... Yep. Very serious. I had a name. I never. I didn't say out loud, but it was in my mind. He was a serious beat. Right. This man was serious about the stuff nobody else was serious about. Yep. If you wasn't serious about it, he was. And he stayed serious. You didn't see him a week later. He was not serious about that. He was still serious about that. Yeah. He was serious about politics. Yep. He was serious about how music was represented. He Thank was you. serious about what Thank you. How Cleveland was represented. Thank you. Yep. He was serious about black culture. Family, yes, black culture. About what, how people Everything. Children. He was serious about all of these things and never wavered from that. Not. Never. So we had we've had beef. Some of us have had beefs with him about certain things because he wouldn't let me on the mic because I was mad, <laughs> I was cussing, or you mm -hmm. know, what I'm and I, I, you know, what I'm saying we had beefs with him like that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Being disrespectful around somebody who you might have thought, well, who is that? I don't care who that is. And he, mm. he, huh, he get mad about. So we people had their beefs with him, but he was serious. Yep. All the time. So I just wanted to say super shout out to my to my main man, the godfather of Cleveland hip hop. People try to call me that. I ain't nobody's godfather. Listen, people don't understand. Like I on Facebook, I say on people's birthday, right? I say happy birth anniversary to uh God's son, God's daughter. I'm not calling myself your God and you my son, or I'm God and you my father. I'm calling you the God daughter or God's son. The hip hop father of Cleveland was Silver B. Silver B, 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 I mean, but it's cool with being called. They don't bother me when nobody called me that, though. I just wanted to give you the, the extra level. Because I might, you know what I'm saying? That's the real, real level of it. But I just want to just bring it back home and say thank you, Silver B, for being the glue. In a city where nobody wants to be the glue, he was the know. glue. In a city where nobody wants to bring people together. Amen. He's the glue in a city where everybody has a secret competition against each other. He, he was, was the glue. That's right. Anytime you we can't help Michael it, Jackson, we can't help Cleveland. it. It's psychological. You know, I want to compete against you because yeah. because I don't know no better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just a thing. We can't help it. I don't get mad at people because they want to. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what motivates. You. But what I learned is, if somebody I feel is competing against me, you know what I'm gonna do? I want to feed them. I want to help them. So that it just keeps messing with you for, for thinking like that. That's, That's what right. I want to do. Absolutely. I love it. It's the funnest thing in the world. For somebody that's worried about who raps better, I just want to give you a sandwich or something. Or just, so it keeps messing with you every time you keep looking at me like that. <laughs> so hopefully one day you get to the point, you know what? I'm tired of thinking like competing with him. Maybe we're like family or something. Come on now. You understand what I'm saying? Because you know what? I got the type of thinking 
that dudes got when they in prison. I already got it without going to prison. That's why I don't go to prison, because I already got the thinking. You know how the type of thinking they get when they're in prison? When you're in prison, you want to look for the people that's from your city. Because that's the ones that you need to be with. Right. I already got the thinking without going to jail. That's why I don't go. I already look okay. at everybody in the city as my team already. Whether you know it or not, doesn't matter. Long as I know it, I'm I'm straight. You're good. Your knowledge is your real security. That's right. If you don't know nothing, you're insecure and you don't have no security. That's why you arguing all the time. That's why you mad all the time because that's your security system that keeps fighting everything that people are saying and everything that people are doing because you really don't know. Mm -hmm. The more you know the right thing, the less defensive you become. So I'm not mad at anybody. We are all family in Cleveland, but we need more people to really be glue. Yes. But what be is is glue. That's what he did. Till he died. His his job every time he walked out the house was to bring people together. Mm-hmm. And he didn't ask you, do you like him first? Because if you don't like him, I don't want to bring you guys. He didn't oh. care. He said, huh, huh, I'm gonna bring you the eyes together no matter how much <laughs> secret competition you got against <laughs> each other. <laughs> no matter how much my DJing is better than his DJing and the world cares less because when they see both of you, they say both of y'all from Cleveland. <laughs> That's personal between y'all because y'all been going through that since high school. Huh? But y'all don't make no money off that secret competition. But you understand what I'm saying? We can't help it. <laughs> can't help it. That's what, that's what you know what I'm saying. And my job is I, I try to be the baby glue. I'm Elmer's glue. He was gorilla glue. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I got a, I got some gorilla glue stuff coming up though that I'm borrowing from people. I don't, even, I don't want I'm not turning into gorilla. I'm still Elmer's glue, but I'll borrow some gorilla glue and bring some of y'all together because that's what you're supposed to do as you you get older, you're supposed to do bigger and better things for the people around you. And the secret to this Silverby showed me years ago, the secret is at some point For you to move to the next level and anything in life, you have to recognize that you need to be dealing with something that's bigger than you. Right. And if you never get to something that's bigger than you, that means you're stuck (laughs) right in here. Doesn't matter what you're driving. Doesn't matter how much money you got. You are stuck in your head until you look at whatever it is you're doing is bigger than you. You need to make, if you're a rapper or a singer, you need to make songs that are bigger than you. If you run a company, you should want to run a company that's bigger than you. And if that's not our intent or our goal, because really, to be truthful, a lot of things change, which Earl knows. A lot of things change when you start to think, how can I feed other people besides myself? When that happens, everything changes. But until that happens, you're going to always be competing with folks. But the day you wake up and say, how can I feed somebody else other than Jeff? That's me. Life changes. Right. Most folks have never woke up. They're still trying to, I need to be seen. Well, if you need to be seen, do some good stuff. Nobody cares about looking at you. You're not doing something that's just that good. But I'll tell you how to get past that. Just feed, figure out a way to help and feed other people. And then you'll also figure out and learn how to feed yourself while you're doing that because everybody else isn't going to eat and you starve. Now, if you're 20 years old, you don't have to think like that. But if you're 30 years old, you might start to consider that. If you're 40, you damn sure need to be fit. If you're 50 years old and ain't thinking that, you need to go get a job and just leave everybody alone. (laughs) (laughs) So, once again, shout out to Silver B. Bill Richards. I'm just so proud of the man because, like I said, I know it hurt New York when I say this, but we so much better than y'all in so many ways. And I'm just so glad that I know it while Clevelanders are finding out slow. Mm. I'm not mad at y'all for finding out Superman is from 105th and all other comic book characters come from Superman. Iron Man is a version of Superman. Batman (laughs) is just a version of Superman. Superman, Superman has all the powers that all the other characters got in just one bit. When you're looking at the Flash, who was the Flash? Superman, Superman. running fast. 
When you look at Aquaman, <laughs> who is he? Superman swimming. <laughs> every, every superhero is Superman, and Superman comes from 105th and Cleveland. Right on. And the average person walking down 105th and Cleveland don't even know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when I call Cleveland secret Ohio, everything is a secret. Yeah. When you a good song, it's a secret. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know it. <laughs> you got somebody hungry right now, and across the street from where they at, they're giving away free food, but nobody around them will even tell them. Secret Ohio. Everything is a secret. Mm. Everybody yep. has a picture from the 80s, but they won't let you take a picture of it. Mm-hmm. Everything is a secret. Ask somebody where their shoes got them from. I don't know. My girl bought them from. Everything in Cleveland is a secret. <laughs> And the reason why is because we think in our mind, as long as nobody else knows, I am superior over my other Clevelander. And when out of town comes to Cleveland, they look at us and think we crazy, cuckoo crazy. Because they're like, why y'all ain't getting money? Shoot. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to be better than my brother. I'm just trying to be better than my cousin. I'm just trying to outwrap Larry. Who the hell is Larry? (laughs) <laughs> can your kids rap, eat off of you being better than Larry that's why we love Silver B shout out to Silver B for having me around too short all day and all the other yeah. rappers all day yeah. if it wasn't for him I would have never been able to see what it's like to be around these regular people just like us yeah. that people worship and can't speak when they come in the room but because of Silver B I was able to with him being around Michael Jackson having me around Shirley Chisholm and you start to recognize that, wait a minute, these people ain't better than us. They just was in a city that gave them a spotlight. Come on now. Yeah. All right. That's all, man. <laughs> all right. Bless it. Myron Ruffin on the line. What's going on, Myron? Hey, guys. Um. I I, there, I uh, would like yeah. to say amen to Suave Gotti. Um, he said a mouthful, and that needs to be put into a time capsule what he just said about our brother Silver B. Um, I don't know. A lot of people know me um, here. I grew up in Down the Way, Cleveland, Ohio. I went to East Tech High School, class of 90, and I was fortunate enough to fall into a few things in Cleveland that um, was set in the pathway by a silver bee. Um, growing up in Cleveland, I was inspired by this, this festival called the Glenville Festival mm-hmm. that was put on in which when I growing up, it used to be sort of the battle of community bands. And that was when there was music instruments in the schools. And by the time I hit, it hit 1985, when it was time for me to hit high school, there was no programs to, sup- to supplement music. And we had hip hop and that was what it was. And every day going to football practice, me and my teammates, we were playing BDP and Public Enemy and everyone else. At that time was when I began to notice this one little Demir guy at all of these festivals that are involved with him. East Flintfield Festival, uh, Lee Harvard Festival, Buckeye Woodland. He was is like a, a a spirit that was there. And you knew that all points was in between with what he was doing. And and I left for four years, went to Oberlin College, met a lot of New Yorkers who I had to teach three things. I had to teach them how to ride a bike, I had to teach them to swim, and they often borrowed my car to drive at the stadium to learn how to, to, to get their license and drive. So when Swap Gotti says to you about New Yorkers <laughs> and how uh, at times they are extremely... Um, I guess you would call underdeveloped. Appreciate your Cleveland brothers and sisters on how much we had access to 
versus them. Again, I'll repeat, swim, drive a car, and ride a bike. So <laughs> coming back home, uh, I continued to run into Silver B in many different activities of things that he was involved with. And I just so happened to stumble upon him and in, in his introduction to me to a one Zach Reed who was coming to sets that we had along with my partner Daniel Gray Contar at Urban Dialect Magazine. We had that magazine for three years in Cleveland. We kind of set our place in what we were doing and evolved from that relationship and that introduction became Family Union in the Park, which I was uh, able to do for 17 years in Cleveland. And again, all of these things, needless to say, uh, it set a course for me in my life where uh, I've been able to do a whole lot of things in regards to entertainment. And a lot of that is because of a person like Silver B, who, um, when I heard about this and I was on Facebook and was on my way down to Florida this past weekend to produce a show, I, I couldn't stop having tears running out of my eyes on the plane. Um, Silver B was a cultural artist. And like, I can name people in different communities in different cities around the country that I go to that have their silver bees. And um, we have to do more to protect our cultural artists. And I, for one, wanted to join in on this call this evening because there was something I was going to write. It would have just been too difficult for me to put this to paper. But I wanted to name people in different communities that are silver bees. These people they are selfless and they wake up as Swaff mentioned in the morning thinking about we versus I and we have to protect those people those people are our griots uh, they are our whole orders of our owners of history and they also take the least among us and get us walking straight I remember listening to Kendrick Lamar's first, one of his first albums to Pimp a Butterfly. I think it was the second one. And there was an interview with him with Tupac at the end of the album. And Tupac mentioned that average black man in the world, in America, has five years of maximum strength where you, you, you want to work out, you want to lift weights. You want to resist. You want to protest. You want to do the most creative things in your life. And then after that five-year period, you then start having kids. You start having responsibilities and things of that nature. Well, in Cleveland, there was a lot of young men that was at that pivotal point in which Silver B took those young men where they could have been going in the wrong direction and made life right for them. I remember him and uh, him being one of those people, another person that most recently passed away about a year or so ago was Mansfield Frazier, God rest his soul as well. But these were two people that I knew of who encountered young men who were in the transitional parts of their lives and made some real big things happen for them because these people had were deciding that they wanted to take what society considered as the least among us and make them strong. And you knew when you had an event and Silver B showed up, he was quiet, he didn't say much. All you remember was his smile and him connecting people together that it was ordained. Um, we often come across the events that go on where you have this per this company, that company sponsors it, which sort of makes it real in the public size. Well, often in events that I have had in Cleveland, in my eyes, when Silver B was there, we knew that the community was there. The community ordained it. Um, so I'm, I'm very sad 
Um, the last time I saw Silver B was a concert I put on at the Playhouse. It was a tour with Layla Hathaway and Raheem Divine, and I was I was coming out the back door after settling up the union and everything for us to go to Chicago the next morning to put it on. He was walking down the street. We walked right by. We walked by each other. We stopped. We hugged. And I didn't know what was going on with him at the time. It just didn't settle right with me. But that was the last time that I saw him. And uh, I wish I could have had more time for him at that time to say I love you and I thank you. And, um, you know, it just puts us in the mind state again. You know, our cultural artists like him, like the Suave Gotties, you know, or like the Mansfield Frasers or many other people, and that's women on this list as well in Cleveland, those cultural artists that work day in and day out for the collective we, we have to do more to protect them and make sure that they're okay throughout life because these people wake up in the morning giving us uh, the shirt off their backs. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with this. I didn't want to know how he passed away. I didn't know what, he, we want to know what he was sick from. I just know that everybody lost a friend. Everybody lost a friend. And uh, I'm uh, demonstrably sad about it. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to call in tonight out of, you know, basically out of parts unknown. Uh, Cause I, I've been living on the other side of the state the last 16 years. I've been in Cleveland a lot, but not a lot of people know that I've lived on the other side of the state the last 16 years. But when I heard about this, uh, I just wanted to be there for this and for this call tonight. So thank you for, Errol, thank you for extending me the platform this evening to talk about this. Thank you. On the mic. And uh, that's pretty much what I have to say, guys. Thank you. Hey, Pop. <laughs> What's up, boy? I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to say much. But um, one, let me say shout out to my Shishi. I see she's on. Uh, hey, Shishi. Hey, girl. Virtual. I respect that. I'm in the building with Rob Cruz and my granddaddy, Slav Caddy. You know. <laughs> Legends mm -hmm. in the building, um, as so was Silver B. Silver B um, was very special to me. I met uh, B when I was 13, back in the show wagon days. Yes. And, um, you know, I he's, he's, he, he might have been at every show I ever did. Seriously, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's always in the building. But, um, you know, B, even though my music was not like, you know, of his liking. Mm -hmm. He did respect me as an artist though. And I always appreciated that. Like, and when he saw me, he would be like, Poison, you got a song for me yet? And I'm like, not yet, you know, getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. But what I, what I took the most from that, you know, he was like, you gotta have a message, Poison. When you, when you doing your mess, your music, I know you, you're a dirty rapper. <laughs> But you gotta have a message. So that's been my thing. This is my baby, y'all. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. But, um, that's been my thing, you know, since I've been making my music. I make sure that even though I'm a quote unquote dirty rapper, I still have a message. And mm -hmm. you know, Silver B, he checked me on that every time, like throughout my whole career. Make sure you're making music that's meaningful to somebody else. And I kind of like, you know, what you said earlier, Swab, about you, if you got it, my mindset of feeding someone else. Well, that's how I feed people through my music. You know what I'm saying? And when I say dirty rapper, it's just because I use curse words. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, B, B, B was there throughout my whole career. He was my godfather. When I saw B, we smooched every time I saw him. And I'm, you know, it's unfortunate that we lost a legend, but I am grateful to have had a relationship with B, you know? So I feel, I feel good about that. I feel good that I can sit here on this panel and, and talk about my relationship with him. Now, I didn't been cussed out by B before. He, didn't cut me <laughs> <all>. <laughs> he got me all the way together, mm -hmm. but it, it was all love, you know what I'm saying? 
And um, that's all I want to say. So shout out to Silver B and the mix, 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 mix. mix. Oh, mix, 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 oh, mix, mix. Oh, and, oh, and by the way, um, since I'm on the earth, October 7th, I will be a exotic cuisine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I finally, Silver B, I finally wrote a clean song. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, that's why I ain't want to get right on my phone. I'm going to do all that. I'm about to go. I love y'all. Uh, oh, <laughs> love you, Shishi. Bye, baby. <laughs> Roger, you got something? Yeah, I'll say something. Uh, definitely going to say something about Silver B. Um, I go by the name of, well, my name is Roger Corn. I go by the name of RP. Some people know me as RP. Some people know me as uh, Bad Monkey. <laughs> Bad Monkey Entertainment. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, Silver B, uh, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here right now to this day. Um, my mother, she met Silver B and, um, she was on her, she said she, the story was she was on her way to a comedy club and she was like, she got invited by Silver B, uh, down when you was on St. Clair, right. uh, right off of 40th, if I'm mistaken. And, um, and my mother was like, uh, she's going to this radio station. She always knew I was into music, but didn't never really have a, a, a plug other than my cousin down at the other radio station. So, um, she went down there. Uh, she was at a show that he had on your station on Voice of Radio, and uh, she gave me a call and told me to come down and, you know, introduce me to to Silver B. And uh, first thing I was thinking, like, yo, man, who is this old dude? Oh. <laughs> like everybody surrounded, like, yo, he who, who is he? Is he he got to be important because everybody there was showing him love and, and he was there for support. And everybody was able to get on the mic who wanted to get on the mic. He made sure that whoever he invited, he made them feel comfortable. He made my mom feel comfortable. He made her feel welcoming. And uh, my mom eventually ended up calling me, which I came down there and she introduced me to him. And then uh, eventually she introduced me to a good, a good friend of mine to this day, Mr. Mr. Porter, Mr. Uh, Earl Porter. And I currently, uh, taking golf lessons from right now. <laughs> I was whooping him before, then he went to Vegas, and I don't know what happened. But uh, he came back thinking he Tiger Woods. But anyway, I, it it all it's come all full circle when Suave Gotti said that um, that Silver B is the glue. And he he was known for bringing people together. And if he didn't, if he didn't reach out to my mom and try to bring people together, I wouldn't be here right now talking good things about him right now from my perspective. Um, I, I never really made him mad a lot, but I did. Well, when I did make him mad, it was intentionally just so I could see him get up. I used to believe, I me, me and Silver B, we, we became real cool, man, because he synced a lot at me, and he never he never took any shorts or no shortcuts out of people. If he seen something in you, he definitely will pull it out of you and tell you to do better hashtag do better you can always do better so constructive criticism he was known for it. and if you couldn't take that then you really won't want to be around him because what he'll be saying it'll be for your own good and it'll be for the good of others you know what i'm saying he always kept other people in mind other than himself uh he was like a ninja man he pop up he'd be everywhere <laughs> man i'm talking yes. about every event like yeah, you know what i'm saying you know he gonna be there bright and early too. He gonna show up and he gonna show out and he gonna let you know that uh, he will hog the mic too. He will grab the mic if you ain't really, if you ain't really. Yeah. Last to leave, first to show up and last to leave. But that's a good thing, man. A lot of people ain't got that characteristics about themselves. Where the time he said he was with you in the hospital uh, for your dad, you know what I'm saying? That's the type, that's the kind of guy he was that I seen. He always went the extra mile. And you don't see a lot of people going an extra mile like uh, Silver B did in the mix, 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 mix. You had to make sure you had to count it to make sure it was right. And the thing with push-ups, I don't owe him no push-ups because I did mine on that. But after, yeah, I did mine on that. But but I, it, it it tightened me up to the point where I didn't have to do any push-ups around him because I respected that man and I respected what he stood for. So when he came around, my language did. Yeah, it, it kind of changed. Something like this. So the conversation went a whole direct, new another direction when it came down to him because of what he stood for and, and the respect that I have for uh for that man and still to this day. So uh we can learn a lot from Silver B by being kind to one another. 
by showing up for one another, you know what I'm saying, keeping your word on things and standing up when things are wrong to correct them. And don't be and 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 and, and don't be afraid to be yourself. That's right. And um and when and if you need to change, then change, change, ch make change a good thing. Um, his legacy will live on through us. Hopefully, that we keep him alive because uh, a lot of people die; they die every day. And if we're gonna take anything from him, I would say I'm about to be on my bad monkey stuff. Be a hoe, okay? <clears throat> yes, yes, I said it. Be a hoe. This is bad monkey talking. And my definition of being a hoe is is uh is health over everything. I'm a good hoe. I'm a good hoe. Right, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get some shirts today. I already got. Uh, but health over everything. We, us, us as black men and black women, we need yeah, yeah. to not to be scared to go to the doctor. Right, right. I mean, we got we got all these home remedies and everything that we we follow through, but ain't nothing wrong with we're going to and let, let technology do what technology does um, technology has evolved over the years where it can spot things that we a witch doctor wouldn't be able to so always get a second opinion about anything so get out there take care of yourself and if you see somebody else take care of them and check on one another and and, and put a boot on their neck when you see them out there doing or living wrong or doing something wrong because mm -hmm. your son or your daughter, or it could be you. So, yep. So, with that being said, I want to say I love you. And it's a short period, it's when the four or five years I, I've known you, but I, I always used to see him on TV advocating for people though. So, I, knew, I, I at that time I didn't know him personally like I do now, but he was always for social justice too in the streets. He was out there marching. He was out there knocking on doors. He was showing his face was the face of the people. So shout out to Silver B on that too as well, man. He this man, he he left behind a great legacy that we can all learn from and build from at the same time. Mm -hmm. So shout out to you, Silver B, man. See you on the other side when we get there, man. In the mix. Mix, 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 mix. Always said an extra one just to make sure. <laughs> all right, I want to appreciate everybody for joining us today, man. All the people that came through, everybody that got on the mic. That's a great thing to say about a great man. Um, also, everyone who chimed in and on our Zoom link, also, thanks for joining us from all over the country. Thanks for having us. And I uh, just remember the great man. And I, all right, from uh, the days of USA Skating Rink <laughs> to the Love, East Cleveland Love Festival, the voice mm -hmm. of radio, we will remember this man. He was unique in every way. Uh, my, 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 one of my biggest moments was watching Silver B was a time at the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 um, the parade on uh, Kansas, the Labor mm -hmm. Day parade. He jumped on the stage, snatched, <laughs> snatched the mic from Harry Boomer, and said, Voice Radio is in the house. And he gave him back the mic. <laughs> wow. Harry. Harry Boomer was on stage MC, and he grabbed the mic from Voice Radio is in the house. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Had a Kanye West moment. I know, man. And, and that was yeah. my guy, man. He, he, he advocated and promoted the station so hard, yeah, man, and, and made, made sure that we were relevant all the time, yep. man. Yeah, and um, so I loved him for that, and just loved him for every thing he brought. Uh, two voices radio man for almost eleven years. I called Silver B. He jumped on board, man. Couldn't wait to get started, and never quit. Never missed a day. He was right. uh, his show at one twice. He got to number two in the world in his category. Oh wow! You know, on the station, right? So we only had one. Yeah, so he. He did his thing, man, and he was heard, and people loved him. And I would sit here. He just amazed me because everybody's in his phone. You know, hey, he just sit here. Oh, I, I engineered a show one day. I remember he called the guy from the Commodore. <laughs> we called the guy from the Commodore. was like, wait, well, let me call, like, call, call Flavor Flav. Here, here, here's Flavor Flav number. I'm like, dude, I mean, every number. And I'd just be calling Flavor Flav? Silver B wanted to talk to you. you know, wow. You're on the show, and, he, and that's what he would do. And he would also call the... <laughs> The guy who was walking the dog, who knew 
Flavor Flav's uncle who knew the guy who worked at the store <laughs> down the street who was in the taxi ride the bus. <laughs> he, 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 he'll let you know. He knew everybody, man. Yep. I knew that guy because he was standing right next to the president when the president on the street and that guy and his friend and his cousin came over. I knew that guy. I'm like, yeah, man. You know what so, I mean? One more thing about Silver. I flew out to Chicago. Uh, me uh, with the African American Music Association, Mr. Greg. I met them out there. And um, I met Joe Jackson's 80th birthday party. So we out there having a ball out on the patio. We're inside. I'm in there cutting this cake. And I look up, man. And here goes Silver B. <laughs> he got that song. I'm out, but he was there at Joe Jackson's birthday party, man, in Chicago. So, Silver, we love you, man. We love Never you. forget you. As long as I'm around, you'll live forever. That's right. Look, That's I just, right. I just want to say, man, that it's like he was saying his phone is the plug. In actuality, man, Silver B was the plug. Yeah. Yeah. The and socket. The thing. Like, it's like, it's so many levels to what made Silver B special. One of them was his level of intelligence and knowledge. See, what I, I, got, a, I got a theory for me, person, a personal theory. I'm not going to hang around anybody too long if they don't make the city look good, especially for somebody who frequently goes out of town. If these people who go out of town if I go to out of town and somebody said, that's your dude, and, and then they're looking like crazy at me, I can't, mm -hmm. I won't be around that person no more. Because mm -hmm. to me, people like that, and there's a lot of them, people like that make the city look bad, and you don't know that means you look bad too. Right. Because yep. people, when you meet somebody from a city, you judge the whole city off that person. Yeah. This is what we understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. If somebody come here, right? If somebody walk in this room right now and say they from Oklahoma, and that person's attitude stinks, we think everybody yeah. from Oklahoma is like that. Yeah. Until right. we meet somebody from Oklahoma who cool, and Oklahoma mm -hmm. suck. Why? Because that person we met. Right. So when I go out of town, I know that I'm not just representing Swag Guy. I represent Cleveland. That's why I had this attitude, hip hop attitude, rap attitude. I do. I know that. I need to represent so that our city looks right. Mm -hmm. Silver B was respected by all these people from all these different cities. So he was one of the people who made us look good. Like Lynn Tolliver oh, made us look good. And right. some people, when you say their name, people in other cities respect our city because of that person. The name, that's Joe right. Lee. That's the reason why he was right. at Joe Jones' party. You don't let people at your party like that with a name that's that high unless you respect mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. You can't just oh, but you go to a lot of parties. You can be a you can be a joke. No, no, you're only gonna be there because people respect you. That's why he took picture with Michael Jackson. That's why he took picture with Barack Obama. That's, that's right. because he took picture with Jay Z because the people around respected him respect so much. He was you. allowed that's to right. be around everybody. Yep. How many people can say that? Mm. How many people can say you can be around people for free? No, we ain't talking mm -hmm. about you bought your way into the cheesy after party and took a picture with G. No, how many people can be at everybody's party and That's you didn't pay nothing? Well, how many of us mm -hmm. can say that? And was so nice when they walked through the door. You know what I'm saying? Real mm -hmm. he got the royal treatment. But the That's thing right. about it is, if you constantly look at television and then look at Silver B and look at television, then you'll separate and say he's not that important because he ain't on television. And then you'll just blot him out and you won't take no pictures with him. him. You won't think about him. You think he'll always be here. He's just a dude from Cleveland that's at everything. That's how your mind gonna work. But this is why I went on the internet the other day and I said, if you consider yourself a, a representation of the Cleveland underground and you haven't taken a picture with Silver B, you should probably reconsider your Standing yeah. and position. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was, I, and I didn't know who took a picture with him or not. That ain't. I don't. I wouldn't. When I got on there, if you didn't take a picture with him, I would. I wouldn't think about you when I put that statement out there. Yep. Early. 
Uh, Silver B didn't turn down taking a picture with nobody. He sure didn't. You got, probably just didn't take a I picture with him because you didn't think he was important because you didn't care about the underground. Oh, I thought he I'm was just was keeping it 100, right? I always thought Silver B was important. See, we see we're tricked oh. in the city. We think because I can rap or I can sing, I'm representing Cleveland. No. No. Mm, You're yeah, representing yourself. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to work with other people. You have to collab with other people. You have to help other people. You have to watch other people when they're performing. Right. You have to share yeah. other people's stuff. You have to do things to really represent the underground. Right. So a lot of people in Cleveland really don't represent the underground. They represent themselves. Like my friend said, everybody from Cleveland ain't they for Cleveland. Cleveland. That's right. Come on now. You understand what I'm saying? So just because you were born here and can rap, that doesn't mean you represent Cleveland. You represent yourself. Right on. Let me so that's why. I, so that's what I put that post out there. Yeah. I, and then people got mad. I said, I didn't say you couldn't rap. Right. I didn't say you could sing. I said represent the Cleveland underground. Underground. Yeah. I said if you don't have a picture with Silver B. I'm saying you don't. You maybe I'm just consider that you, you probably yeah. don't represent the underground. It's quite possible. Yeah. Because if you really did represent the underground, I guarantee he wanted to take a picture yeah. with you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. told him, get away from me, old man, or something. And you remember that. But if you really represented the underground, and you knew he wanted was. to take a picture with That's you. Right. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Eric Johnson. And uh, wow, you're talking about Silver B. For me, we're going back to uh, like mid 80s. Uh, you talking about the days of the Black Youth Conference where it's your head. Uh, we talking about uh, him bringing people to the party, our college parties. I'm alpha. He, <laughs> like he, hey, put this person on the mic. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Put this person on the mic. E. Put the, bring these people into the bring these people into the party so they can do this. So they can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Miss Ross Talent Show. Miss Ross. How much of a part of that? What he was with. You know, bringing people to the stage, getting them in the mix, 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 mix. mix, mix I mix, think, mix. uh, I think so much. You talked about <laughs> Swab about being glue, and I think about him, and I think about O'Malley Bay. I think about my partner, Sister Norma Jean Freeman. Oh, yeah, her soulmate, Don Freeman. I think about Professor Curtis Wilson, uh, Khalil Samad. And so yeah. many people who Miss Dot right there. You know, the name, it's a lot long with the names. I mean, Congressman Stokes always made that slot over for Silver B to handle the stage at the Labor Day parade. Silver B had control of the stage and who was hitting the stage. Uh, that's that's what it was. Um, it, it was important because it was a jump off point. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the days of hip hop coalition. Uh, bringing new artists to the stage and introducing people to the community, uh, introducing them and, and bringing them to political people and people of connections. Now, I remember this too. While he would connect you, you was respected to return that connect. <laughs> so, like, when I would see Silver B in D.C. and we had the Congressional Black Caucus, because you know, we we game plan on how we gonna get to this next event. Mm -hmm. You got tickets. You got tickets. You got tickets. So somebody getting us up in here some kind of way. And you know, it was about relationship building. And uh, that glue that you talked about, man, is so real. And how beneficial it was for us. And how if you had some glue, you had to spread it around. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't just about I'm gonna use this just for me. You know, I would DJ community events. So we come up. I'm like, let me hide this mic. <laughs> let, me, let, me hide, let me hide this mic. Silver B gonna if I'm doing a party and I'm playing music, Silver B gonna take over the party for the next 45 minutes. Of <laughs> drinking on new artists and everything. You know, and you're like, all right, man. Oh, it's the last one. It's the last one. But I mean, yeah. it was good for the exposure for young people who were, you know, trying to make a break. Uh mm -mm. And, you know, there are meetings that we had where, you know, it just wasn't about entertainment for him. You know, we had serious meetings about what was going on in these streets. And uh, he was part of that, you know. And there'd be rooms, meetings, you know, closed doors. And you'd be glad you had somebody in there like him. 
because you know sharing perspectives and information you know about what somebody else was experiencing was, was so valuable uh, because the world just wasn't your way and I think that's was you know that was another piece for him. He was able to share some of the other perspectives, especially young people, because you know for a long time for us, you know the youth were suppressed. You know, and really when you think about it, we talking about the mid eighties, nineties, was nobody really trying to hear rap music? Was nobody really trying to deal with hip hop? You know, especially on a broader level, compared to where it is now. Back then, it was kind of like, hey, you know, y'all, y'all can't do that. We know, you know, we gonna have this, we gonna have this R and B band before we gonna have a hip hop act. You know, we gonna, y'all, y'all get about fifteen to twenty minutes. But it was because people like Silver B said, no, you know, you gotta bring this culture and expression to the surface and let this get out. Uh, it was a real benefit, and so I know so many people uh, have benefited from his intervention, from his wisdom. Uh, and to that point, his glue. So I just think it's important, like you said, Squad, that everybody, you know, continue to spread that glue. Right. You know, if you ain't got no glue, get you some. Get you some glue. Because, you know, that's how we get better. That's how Cleveland get better. He will pull people off the mic. You got to understand, bro. <laughs> to really, to, to really actually go to the next level, you got to make somebody mad. It, I mean, period. It's just, there's no way for you to go to the next level of anything and not piss somebody off. And you got some folks that's just, they say they don't want to piss somebody off, but they still pissing you off because they don't want to piss nobody off because they're not doing what, you know, what need to be done. Need to be done. I, I mean, I probably can rhyme right now off my head without cussing because of him, probably. Because yeah, being around him I couldn't rap and curse and he was taking me around all these different people and all these different places so I had to get I had to learn how to murder people without cursing right now I'll I'll murder people lyrically without cursing you know what I'm saying I love I really I love our city man because it is so many great things here and if you right. use Cleveland psychologically right it'll make you a better person if you use it psychologically right because the 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 all of the barriers here are, are invisible and illusional. They're not real barriers. They're 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 all illusion. You know, most people in Cleveland who say they hate Cleveland, they hate Cleveland because of the friends that they hang around. It's the funniest yep. thing. You hate a city because you hang around with no good friends. You made a CD and your friends didn't buy it. <laughs> Somebody needs to give you music 101. Your friends aren't supposed to buy your music. Right, right. That's why they're friends. Fans is what you're supposed to be learning how to create. create and you sell fans. them. Not only do you sell them music, they'll ask you for it and happily buy it from you. Right. But So Cleveland isn't good because my friends don't support me. But I guarantee you, if we look at your 24-7, your whole week, you don't support them. Yeah. So they're just giving you back what you give them. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. People go into a space and don't clap for the other people that perform. Get on the stage, perform. Nobody clap for them, and then they're mad. They're just giving you back what, what you, you did. did. Right. What you uh, mad for? You didn't clap for them, so they ain't clapping for you. It's a mutual agreement. Y'all should be happy. Take them to the bar and buy them a drink. Be like, man, you feel the same way I feel about your music. Come on, let me take you to the bar. That's right. That's what you should do. Hey, I just want to build on what this king said and what, what you said as well. Um, one thing about Uncle B, he was real. Um, one thing he taught me was he took... He did three scenarios for me because I was just messed up, young dude, man. I was messed up. I was real messed up. And um, my mom, because I wasn't allowed to go to that party for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because I got in trouble. And my mom was like, uh, you're not going. Exhibit was there. Silk the Shocker was there. Uh, man, uh, a lot of people was there. All the B-Boys was there at the, at the party for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So after that happened and I missed it, took my licks like a man. Uh, he took me over a popular rapper's mom's house. I'm not going to... 
to mention his name, but he took me over his house, his mom's house, and she stayed right in the middle of the jet still, the, 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 the hood still. And I met his brothers. I found out I knew his brothers, but not for him them being this famous person's brother, but from being in the streets with me. And um, then he took me over to one of his family members' house, a doctor. I cannot remember his name. And it was a big, beautiful house all the way out in Garfield somewhere or something. Like, no, Solon, Solon. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and we was out there. And we was, this house was so huge. It looked like an auditorium in a living room. To me, it had a bridge. It was the first time we seen a bridge in a house, you know? And uh, the kid, he left, the, the guy and the doctor walked off with Uncle B and he left me with his son. He was my age, we was 16. And he had an Eddie Bauer. And he, he just had the life that I think I deserve. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then he took me to his business owner. He owned a landscaping company. And he showed me his house. His house was really laid out. He built his house. He just talked about these special touches he put on his house. Beautiful. And then after this trip, one day, he showed me something. He said, now, you want to be a rapper and a gangster. He said, you want to be a gangster. You want to be out here and be represented as a gangster. He said, look how them gangsters' moms is living. Then he said, look how that college doctoring is living. Then he said, look at how that business owner is living. He said, now you look at all the smoke and mirrors that you see on TV. Which way do you want to live? So Uncle B was always real about with the youth. And I, I get angry every time I talk because I got gray in my hair now. And uh, every time I hear people my age and older say, these kids don't know no better. They're crazy. And, and I say, you scared of the youth? How are they going to respect you if you scared of them? Because Mr. B, Uncle B. Godfather B, he demanded his respect from young, old, his age, whatever, but he never feared the youth. So that's mm -hmm. what I want to leave here again saying is that all the older people that's, 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 that can be the glue, that can be the role models and examples out here, I want to see y'all out here popping up at events, talking to youth, at school events too, just like he did, because that's where it's going. You know, that's where it's going. Without getting the youth, we're at the, at the end of our demise. And he know that. And he showed that through his actions. And that's why he showed up for the youth. Right on. All Just right, like God bless. Days. God bless his memory. God bless his silver B. So check this out. Let's try. And Lana, hold on, soft. Where you go, man? I'm a, and Lana Silver B, man. We're going to end the show with um freestyle for him, all right? Yeah, so you want you to give it up. RP, you ready? Man, I was born for All this. Right. So we got you ain't gonna need headphones. I got this beat on for I'm gonna need no headphones for the beat on for you. And y'all rock out, go ahead and swap and kick it off and mm -hmm. here we go. Yeah, turn, turn that up, turn up turn man. Up. You gotta feel it. Uh, Swab. What up, I don't Swab? care what city you in, I'm talking to you. Oh, man. Right. All right, check it. Do it like this. Now, nah, my name is Suave. Right now, I'm too cute. Y'all see me, black gangster hat and a blue suit. Who want to try me? Hit me on the Bluetooth. Listen, though, killer, though. Magilla Gorilla Flow. Yo, I'm OG, but y'all know me. Told you, black gangster hat and goatee. And ain't nothing none of you rappers can show me but a trophy. Woe is me. I'm old school like Jodeci, but y'all can't flow with me. Y'all really, really, really don't want to see a real type of rapper that come through. We'll slap you with the verse in a chapter. Very hard to adapt the type of flows I'm going to hit you with. Dumb rappers go, hey, what up? Smart rappers call constituents. I come through and spit a killer flow. Here we go. Every syllable, niggas know. I'm just like a gorilla flow. If it, it be flow, it be believe it, be the big it flow. Yeah, it'll be critical. Condition with no permission. Anytime y'all see me in a spot, that means you paid admission. Rich, you could rap as good as me. Keep wishing. You want to rap as good as me? Go fishing. I'm about to give y'all haul another edition, just like an Eddie Bauer edition. I'm on a mission, killing you hoes, killing them with flows. Here we go again, Suave. Any rapper that wants to try me, I'm worse than HIV. Connected to an IV, dopest rapper I see. Check my ID, and I'ma tell you though, for real though. 
you can't rap as good as me, you better go and call your aunt. And when we're done, we'll hook up at a restaurant. Suave, they can flip blows and go through farts and the TV type of flow while I'm eating a croissant. Put your eye in the corner, like little Jack Horner. Break her down just like a transformer. You cannot ignore me. Or step toward me, less of a tit or seek for me. You can soar, cheat like an ego. Spot so illegal when you catch me in the hood and put your mama in a Rigo. 89er. You can see I'm the brother old school like Ernest Viner. I don't give a hell if she's ugly or one finer. Next time you see us, we in a diner. And I'm about yeah. to remind you, I've been broke since I came from Mama with vagina. I tell you, really though, Magilla flow. I done told y'all, you cannot defeat us. Browns flow, y'all. Since the fetus is what I came through. When I come to hang you, I'm gonna hit it like a crip or a blood. I bang two or three or four, still hardcore. And when I'm done, got the niggas give your encore in your mental, influential, potential, freestyler. You need no pen, no pencil, no phone or writing utensil. Cause when you got a good brain, your words are so essential. But when you don't got a good brain, you need to a pencil or somebody, maybe your kinfolk can help you, niggas, flow, coach, figure. Suave, come through with water and take a swigger. I beat you, you can sip all the me. You know, you can't stop me. You can do nothing to try to cop me. Still sound sloppy. Because when I come through, I'm going to play you like Yachty and kill you just like a Nazi. Y'all don't want to step to me with any form of discrepancy. Suave, they go through weak rappers like mental telepathy, and this ain't even a fast of me. You fools don't know how to cook. I come through with the chef in me and show y'all all the recipe, and then I slap it back in the book. Suave, they spit a killer flow. Take a look. Hey! Oh, damn! Wow! Next, 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 next. Yeah! Yo, 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 Put your mask yo, yo. on, nigga. Yeah. I just got my damn class know, on. Man. Freestyle yeah. clinic, no gimmicks, no limits. Y'all yeah. niggas yeah. know. <laughs> Dedicate that to your mama and your father. Yo. Yo, I think so. I think so, yo. Yo, hey, yo, Swab, when you see Silver B in the heavenly gates, I think you bought on 40. I heard two cuss words. It's 20 apiece. Now let's get back right to the beat. I'm talking right to the streets. I'm talking to the young. I'm talking to the young dude with a big gun. Now put the gun down and be like Pops talking to Craig. I can take you to somewhere using your legs and using your brain. Huh. Let's go down with my flow. I'm from 33rd. That's not that 3 0. This that bad monkey show. I'm that bad monkey spitter. Everybody that he know, I'm a big stepper and a hitter. I don't do guns, but I got guns and I keep them on my shelf and I leave them to the rest. I like to cook. Call me a chef. I do it the best. Everything got coming, no stress. Hair with the test. Going off the top of my bristle. I don't care about nothing but my baby mizzle. I made him my wifey. A lot of kids, 10 of them. I check them like Nikes. And I beat up this beat, man. Call me straight Ike. I get it going. I keep it flowing. You know I gotta get it off my brain. And I'm just going insane because this mental brain is making me cry inside. But I can't show no fear from Cleveland streets where we keep it and we drink some beers. And we got them docks right by the boats. Bringing in them totes. You know what's in it from the beginning. I've been a menace like dead Ran on my bike. I like to excite from fights and gun fights. I put the gun down, a man, so I gotta talk how I'm walking now. I hold it down, I'm just going off the top of my squizzle. Poison in the back, throw me something in my cup so I can relax. You know, I got that frax in the backpack. You know, EB, hold it down on that golf course. Of course, he got nine hoes. And out of that, he shot 50. He ain't that cold, but we're going to get busy one day. And I can't wait to make a move on a Sunday. That's my birthday. My mom had made me a party. She yeah. said, we're going to rock out. She called me Lottie Dottie. They call me Dottie from the hood. I keep the shoddy under the hood. It's dusty and rusty because I don't shoot it. I keep my hands close to me. And I'll be everywhere my kids. Yeah, keep them kids close to me. Supposed to be. And I'm just getting aggressive on this mic. But when I ease on down, I'm going to spit it right. I'm from that land down under. I'm just loud like it's thunder. And I'm deep up in my thunder. And I'm just blowing my guns where my kids is grown and the kids is seen. And we still on the scene with that gangster lean. Now I mean, I'm blocking our shots. You know, I gotta keep my eyes on all cops. And because they're trying to put something up in my box. You know I'm coming back. Yeah, stub not. What's a snub not? I'm just going, I need tissue. I just made that word up. <laughs> yo, 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 yo.
Let me drop something for my Uncle B. Yeah, yeah, I'm Mr. T.Y. Wizzy, and the game ain't been easy without my homie next to me. I keep him in my mind, and also, too, I recognize that he always going to keep me a part of history. Y'all better recognize when they go in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they better mention me as the youngest boy on the member to get hip-hop and represent it. Hey, look, represent everything you stand for. He always told me to keep it ten toes. I told you, boy, I will show, and I'm going to do it till I glow. I told you I'm not slow. I'm just trying to show you some more. So pick my scene. I told you, boy, I should have been rocking camouflage green because I always repping my team. And I don't I'm nothing but cash. And he always told me that I just talk bad about your moms. I told you I'm trying to do whatever so I don't go crazy like Vietnam knowing that he ain't on the phone when I call. But recognize he looking down on all of y'all and not to our own little show into an enterprise. I told you I'm trying to freestyle one time for my city and in Cleveland, in a city that breeds thieves. I told you I'm trying to come up as a king, and that's how you told me to start representing everything as royalty. Look, and it's nothing but loyalty to the royal time fucking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to the royal round, t- round table family for silver beat. Everybody say in the mix with me seven times in your mind. Let's go raise your palm and count it one more time in the mix. In the mix. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's do it like this. For all y'all that say you ain't feeling me, y'all killing me. Willingly, I'm gonna do this all straight for a silver B. Silver B, 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 up in the mix. I known Suave Gotti since 86. That brother, I met him downtown when he was pitching flow that sound like surround sound. He made your ears pound. I love that young brother, 16 years old. That brother got down. He thought that he was LL, flows with parallel. 35 years is still well. Y'all don't understand. My young brother, well, I've got. He grew up to be the man, and me hung out, me rung out, we rode with us, we rode back when Silver B was wide the bus. We were from bus to car, from car to walking. Super shout out, cause y'all hear be talking. He's all in your brain and he's all in your head. Now everybody listen closely to the words that I said and said. But when we glad he teach me gun play. He teach you how to make sure you keep your mind fed. Now let's talk about Asia. So I'm able to teach y'all all the procedure. I think we style at Asia. But y'all don't understand when I squeeze ya, I make y'all all have seizures. Now here we go again. Again, so I flow again. I've got dice in my hand, he invisible. I throw them in. Seven, 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 eleven. Silver B, he preaches just like a ref. But we hung out because that's my breath. But y'all listening, I be killing competition. And don't care if you come from Ohio or Michigan. I know y'all listening. Come to Cleveland and we ride your ass like Michelin. Yeah. Hey, everybody come to Cleveland. All the stars that knew Uncle B. It's coming on Saturday. Come to and represent, yo. I kick what you desire. Real. Everybody that... No, Uncle B and Aya. To the Bible, Aya, Asha, Aya. And this Saturday, don't come just too bummy. Please try to wear proper attire if you have some. If you don't, put your t-shirts. But please don't wrap your wind up in t-shirts. Oh, try me, I told you. I am not playing with you. I'll fold you up like paperwork in, my friend. Did I spit the flow, kill him once again. Silver people Yo, on his let head. Me snatch the mic like silver no people. Of that man is no headstone. He really is not dead because yeah. energy of spirit don't die. Why ask why? Silver P is in the mix, mix, mix. And he was representing till 76. Or was it 79 or 69? You'll have to lose it in my mind. But it doesn't really matter time at the time when I spit a line like hopscotch, my flows is top notch. I am the brother that be spitting flows, killing that. Ricky Joe, here we that. Here we go, feeling that. Feelingly, as I come through and I spit a soliloquy, artillery. Really, this feeling don't be feeling me. They know I'm dope when it come to flows and delivery. Because why? I cause misery. Hey, man. Off a of stereo, I drop it like a parable. I didn't cuss one time. That was pretty hard. <laughs> Fly high I was, like I even made up some work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Silver B, my 80s, bro. Silver B, Silver B. From the 80s all the way to 2020, Voice of Radio. Hey, check it out, man. We appreciate everybody, man. Silver B, we love you. We love Real you. Hip-hop. We love you. Up there. We-
Out of everything we seen tonight, Silver P was the real hip hop. We out of here, y'all. Hey, don't forget uh, the family, y'all. We got to go. The family has put out a GoFundMe link for help with some of the uh, costs of the funeral and everything else going on. And uh, that link will be up. We'll be shooting it out on social media. But don't forget this Saturday. Also, Laura Cowan, hit her up on um, Facebook. They are accepting donations for the repass. I guess food and anything else. So anybody can who, offer. Who do we send the money to? The GoFundMe. I'm, I'm going to be posting it, so I'll be texting it okay. to people. It's actually, yeah, it'll be on social media. I'll post it, and everybody just share that all over the place. All right. Okay. Yes, so, right. so, so, hey, check it out. His again. favorite was cassada cake and fish. If y'all can. Cassada cake. His favorite was cassada cake and fish. His favorite was cassada cake and fish. If y'all could donate cassada cake and fish. <laughs> yep. So check out on behalf of me. On behalf of West Radio, I'm Air Reporter CEO and General Manager. I want to thank everybody for joining us for this remembering Silver B event and may this go down in history just like he did. You know, so we out of here, man. Silver B, love you, brother. Bless it. Bye, Alana. Bye, everybody. All right. No, that's what he gave.